will take it in five, four, three, two. Uh, good morning. I'd like to uh, call the April 2nd uh, zoning hearing um, to order. Uh, and we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance, if you'll please join me. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with justice. Thank you. So first, let, uh, let's start with a little business. This uh, panel looks a little different. First of all, we're missing uh, Commissioner Hughes today, who is out uh, doing some recovery, and so uh, wishing him the best as he recovers. And so any uh, things in District 4 will be heard uh, by uh, Commissioner Anderson and myself today to covering uh, District 4 cases. Also, very excited to uh, introduce um, to my left, um, Commissioner Christine Lindstrom, who is new and taking over for District 3, taking over for Commissioner Dance. And so just publicly want to welcome you, uh, Christine, to the to this uh, panel and uh, look forward to working with you and looking forward to a good day as uh, it's your first session. Yeah. So thank you. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, John Peterson to take us through today's agenda. And, and thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Today's hearing will be, will be conducted with the following process and procedure. Each case will be called in numerical order. We ask that the applicant please stand and raise their hand uh, when the case is called to show that they are in attendance. After that, we're going to call to see if there's anyone here opposed to that specific case. We would also ask that the opposition please stand and raise your hand so you, so you can be counted for the official record. After that, um, the applicant and any, uh, and, and, and any opposition will be, will be asked to come forward to be sworn in. The applicant will testify first, and then the opposition, if any, will testify second. It's important to note that each side only gets 10 minutes, and you don't get time to, uh, to rebut what someone else says or to reserve your time. So you need to convey all your information to the board within your 10-minute time period. Additionally, if there's more than one person who wishes to speak on a case, you may want to coordinate with each other about what you're going to talk about because each side only gets 10 minutes and you don't want to cover the same information over and over. And after the 10-minute uh, presentation period by both sides, the board will start to discuss case, the case at hand. From the discussion, they may ask one or more speakers to come back to the front for additional comments or questions. And after that, the board will make a, a decision to either approve, deny, hold, or continue the matter at hand. There are two cases on today's printed agenda which have been withdrawn without prejudice. And these cases will not be heard today. First case is rezone case Z20 of 2024, G. George and Associates, Inc. This case is built wrong without prejudice. It will not be heard today. Second case is SLEP1 of 2024, Tire Swing Collective, Inc. This case has been withdrawn without prejudice. It will not be heard today. Uh, Mr. Chairman of Board, we did get a request, uh, a request late to re withdraw. Uh, LEP number seven of 2024, uh, Amy Mollahan. The applicant did ask this case be withdrawn without prejudice. Is the applicant here for LEP seven? Yes, we're The applicant is present and they, they're asking to be withdrawn without prejudice. Okay. That's in district one, so I'll turn it over to uh, <laughs> Commissioner Ballone. To Thank you, Mr. Wait. Chair. And uh, uh, I'll go ahead and move that we uh, allow the applicant to withdraw without prejudice. Second. I have a second from Commissioner Anderson. Uh, any discussion? Let's call the question. Okay. We have a vote of uh, four to zero to um, allow LUP 7 to be withdrawn without prejudice. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. On today's printed agenda, there are a number of cases that have been held or continued by staff for the Planning Commission. And these cases will not be heard today. First case is rezoning case Z40 of 2023, Atlanta Re Remediation Group, LLC. This case was continued by the staff until the May 7th, 2024 Planning Commission zoning hearing. So Z40 will not be heard today. Rezoning case Z52 of 2023, 1054 Investment Group, LLC. This case has been continued by the staff until the May 7th, 2024 Planning Commission zoning hearing. So Z52 will not be heard today. Rezoning case Z59 of 2023, SS Developers, LLC. This case was continued by the staff until the May 7th, 2024 Planning Commission Zoning Hearing. So Z59 of 2023 will not be heard today. 
Rezoning case Z60 of 2023, MRE Canton LLC. This case was continued by the staff until the May 7th, 2024 Planning Commission zoning hearing. So Z60 of 2023 will not be heard today. Rezoning case Z2 of 2024, Flournoy Development Group LLC. This case was continued by the staff until the May 7th, 2024 Planning Commission zoning hearing. So Z2 of 2024 will not be heard today. Rezoning case Z9 of 2024, Thomas Oreck. This case was continued by the staff until the May 7th, 2024 Planning Commission zoning hearing. So Z9 of 2024 will not be heard today. Rezoning case Z18 of 2024, Sug Real Estate LLC. This case was continued by the staff until the May 7th, 2024 Planning Commission zoning hearing. So Z18 of 2024 will not be heard today. And finally, SLEP 5 of 2024, Sug Real Estate LLC. This case was continued by the staff until the May 7th, 2024 Planning Commission zoning hearing. So SLEP 5 will not be heard today. Mr. Chairman and Board, we did get a request late to continue rezoning case Z17 uh, until your next hearing. Uh, the applicants, uh, uh, yeah, and, and the applicant is present. Is there anyone here opposed to rezoning case Z17? There is no one opposed, and the applicant is asking this case to be continued until your May hearing, Mr. Chairman and Board. Thank you. This is in District 4, so I'm going to ask uh, Commissioner Anderson to take the lead on this for me. Thank you, Chairman. I, I would move that this um, Z17 2024 be continued until the May hearing. Second. I have a second from Commissioner Belong. Any discussion? If not, let's call the question. A vote of four to zero to continue Z17 into the May hearing. Okay, thank you. And before we start the hearing, I have a few more announcements. I would like to ask the folks in today's audience, if you have a cell phone, please turn your cell phone off. Uh, when the phone rings, it does interfere with the broadcast and presentations. And I want to remind applicants, opposition, or any interested party that information is due to this board the Wednesday prior to this hearing. Any information submitted after the Wednesday due date may or may not be considered by the board at their discretion. And Mr. Chair and board, uh, we're gonna have uh, an unusual situation today. Uh, as the board knows, the vice chair is out uh, and the, the chair has to leave later in the morning. So at this time, the staff would ask the board to elect a temporary vice chair to run the, meet, to run the meetings when the, the chair leaves uh, this morning. Since it's my fault that I have to leave for a second, I'll turn it to my fellow commissioners to nominate themselves. Not everybody at once, though. You know. <laughs> I nominate Commissioner Belloyne, Vice Chair. You can second. I second that. I have a second from Commissioner Lindstrom. Any discussion? Let's call the question. Congratulations, Commissioner Ballone. I will be back, I promise you. Um, all right, back to you, uh, all right, Mr. Peterson. All right, with that, Mr. Chairman of Board, I'm ready to start the consent agenda. Cobb County Planning Commission, zoning hearing consent agenda for April 2nd, 2024. First case on consent is rezoning case Z8 of 2024, Jelani Campbell, request rezoning from CF to R15 for a single family residence in land lots 673 and 696 of the 17th district. The property is located on the north side of Lee Road, west of Pine Ridge Road. Staff recommends approval, subject to the following conditions. Number one, single family use only. Number two, Department of Transportation comments and recommendations. Number three, Fire Department comments and recommendations. Number four, Stormwater Management Division comments and recommendations. And number five, Water and Sewer Division comments and recommendations. Is the applicant present? Is there anyone here opposed to rezoning case Z8? Mr. Chairman, board, the, the applicant is not present, uh, but there is also no one here opposed. So would it be the board's wish to leave this on consent? Uh, this is District 2, so Commissioner Anderson, uh, your wishes on leaving this on consent? Given the prior discussions with the applicant, I would, re I would move to keep this, keep this on consent. Okay, thank you. Okay, next case is rezoning case Z14, full service by Hot Rod LLC, request rezoning from GC to NRC for a car wash in land line 59 of the 17th district. The property is located on the northwest side of Austell Road, 
south of County Services Parkway. Staff recommends approval subject to the following conditions. Number one, site plan incorporating code compliant parking to be approved by the district commissioner. Number two, landscape plan including rear 20 foot landscape buffer to the extent possible with the existing wall detention pond locations or reduced 10 foot landscape buffer with an eight foot privacy fence adjacent to the residential properties and a minimum nine foot wide strip required adjacent to the right way per the Austell Road design guidelines to be approved by the district commissioner. Number three, general compliance with the Austell Road design guidelines, including site and building improvements with final approval by the district commissioner. Number four, department of transportation comments and recommendations. Number five, fire department comments and recommendations. Number six, stormwater management division comments and recommendations. And number seven, water and sewer comments and recommendations. Is the applicant present? Uh, the, the applicant is present. Sorry about that, Parks. Is there anyone here opposed to rezone case Z14? Let the record show there's no one opposed. Rezoning case Z15, Dillon Investments LLC request rezoning from LR Road and R80 to LR Road and R80 for a professional office and single family residence in land lot 428 of the 19th District. The property is located on the north side of Mankin Road and on the west side of Villarica Road. Staff recommends approval subject to the following conditions. Number one, the district commissioner to approve the final site plan. Number two, LRO portion of the site to be for professional office use only. Number three, adherence to Macklin Road design guidelines. Number four, 20 foot landscape buffer as required on the LRO portion adjacent to the portion of the property proposed to be zoned residentially. Number five, fire department comments and recommendations. Number six, water and sewer division comments and recommendations. Number seven, stormwater management division comments and recommendations. And number eight, department of transportation comments and recommendations. The applicant's representative is present. Is there anyone here opposed to rezoning case Z15? That direction is one person opposed. So we'll pull that one off consent in here and it's regular order, Mr. Chairman Board. All right, next case is rezoning case Z16, LDS Holdings LLC request rezoning from GC to NRC for a professional office, uh, which is a contractor in land lot 85, the 16th district. The property is located on the north side of Old, uh, Old Noonday Schoolhouse Road, west of Canton Road. Staff recommends approval with a special with a special exception, subject to the following conditions. Number one, site plan received by the zoning division on February 1st, 2024, with minor modifications to be approved by the district commissioner. Number two, variances as identified in the zoning comments. Number three, fire department comments and recommendations. Number four, water and sewer division comments and recommendations. Number five, Department of Transportation comments and recommendations. Number six, Stormwater Management Division comments and recommendations. Number seven, Planning Division comments and recommendations. Number eight, no outdoor storage. And number nine, no heavy equipment to be parked outside. The applicant is here. Is there anyone here opposed to rezoning case Z16? Let the record show there's no one opposed. And moving into Lanny's permits on the consent agenda, LUP nine, uh, a Jamie Enterprises request a temporary land use permit for a personal care home in land lot 50 of the 17th district. The property is located on the north side of Hurt Road, east of Fred Walker Drive. Staff recommends approval for 24 months, subject to the following conditions. Number one, maximum of six residents. Number two, no parking on the right of way. And number three, all stipulations from previous land use permits also apply. Is the applicant present? Let the record show the applicant is here. Is there anyone here opposed to LUP 9? That direct shows no one opposed. Next is LUP 11, Pear Tree Photography Atlanta LLC, request a temporary land use permit for photography in land lot 134 of the 16th district. The property is located on the south side of Starmus Court, east of Rambling Road. Staff recommends approval for, for 24 months, subject to the following conditions. Number one, maximum of one employee. Number two, Department of Transportation comments and recommendations. Number three, Water and Sewer Division comments and recommendations. Number four, Fire Department comments and recommendations. And number five, Stormwater Management Division comments and recommendations. Is the applicant present? Let the record show the applicant is here. Is there anyone here opposed to LEP 11? Let the record show there's no one opposed. And that completes the printed consent agenda, Mr. Chairman Board. And we did get one more request to add one more case to consent, Mr. Chairman Board. It's in District 4 and the 
the opposition and the applicant have come to an agreement on the conditions. So if it's okay with the board, um, we need to, would, would it be okay with the board to amend the consent agenda to add one more case to the consent agenda? Uh, my first thought is yes. What's the, what's the case? Uh, it's Z12, WPG Mapleton, LLC. If the board's okay with it, I'll read it into the record. You can vote on, and then you can vote on adding it to consent. Let's do that. Okay. Rezoning case Z12, WPG Mapleton, LLC, request rezoning from R20 to NRC for a banquet drive through in Landlot 41 of the 17th District. The property is located on the east side of Floyd Road and on the south side of Ayers Road. The applicant is present. Is there anyone here opposed to rezoning case Z12? Let the record show there's no one opposed. Uh, so first we need to have a vote to add it to consent and then I can add the, the conditions to it. Okay. Um, because it's a district four, I'm gonna ask uh, Commissioner Anderson again to, to make the motion regarding this case. Thank you, Chairman. Well, I would move to add uh, Z12 to the consent agenda. Second. <clears throat> second. I have a second from Commissioner Boulogne. Any discussion? If not, let's I, call. I, yep. Go for it. I, I would just want to reiterate that the, can you specify what conditions are attached? Yes, after, after, after we voted oh, on the consent. Okay. okay. Yeah. Just wanted to confirm that. Okay. Um, let's call the question. The so vote of four to zero to add Z12 to the consent agenda. Okay. And then staff would recommend that the board approve Z12 of 2024 WPG Mapleton LLC. Uh, for approval, subject to the March 27th, 2024 letter from the Mapleton Improvement Coalition. Number two, subject to the March 25th, 2024 letter of agreement conditions from Mr. Kevin Moore. And number three, all staff recommendations not in conflict. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as amended. Motion to approve the consent agenda as read and as amended by the addition of Z12 and the uh, deletion of Z15 from the consent agenda. I'll second. And a second from Commissioner Anderson. Uh, any discussion? Let's call the question. Vote of four to zero to approve the consent agenda as amended. Okay, all those folks that were on consent, you're free to leave. Just come back in two weeks for the Board of Commissioners final hearing. Okay, moving into the regular agenda. First case we're gonna hear today is rezoning case Z10 of 2024. Pay, uh, Paul A. Uh, Jua, uh, Popel, LLC, request a rezoning from GC and, and R15 to NRC for a retail center in landlot 1140 of the 19th district. The property is located on the west side of Austell Road and on the south side of Warren Drive. Is the applicant present? That director of the applicant is here. Is there anyone here opposed rezoning case Z10? Two. Okay, let the record show there's two people opposed. All those who wish to address the board, please come forward, be sworn in. have the floor. Okay, thank yeah. you. Go for it. Well, good morning. As if, we see. If you will um, first introduce yourself, just give us your name for the record. M my name is Paul Ejua. I am the owner of the above properties, and I'm looking for rezoning to an NROC. It's currently zone GC and RO15. I'm trying to do a retail strip center. 
at the property. And I had the first meeting with the zoning staff, and I did some adjustment on the site plan. Can you speak into your mic just a little bit? It's okay. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So I adjusted a site plan to accommodate some recommendations that I had with the initial staff meeting. I look at the objection from some of my opposition, as well as the recommendation from the staff, zoning staff. And I've already done some stuff which I saw online as a recommendation. There's already a 200 privacy fence bid. That was the first thing I did a year ago in anticipation for this between the property and the residential property to the west. So I have a 200 feet fence, which is eight feet tall. And I also want the opposition to kindly look at that site. I am, the fence is seven feet above the ground level. So even when you have the cars parking, it is not visible from the resident. I didn't just do it 200 feet, I also did another 120 feet to the south side of the property. So I read a letter from the opposition stating the privacy of the resident, but I think I've done a lot to accommodate that. And I'm also going to do a good buffer, land, landscape buffer. In the letter from the Mabutin Zoning Department, it was mentioned a lot about the variances. I wished my opposition to understand that I'm trying to do the best with that lot. I am, variances exist for a reason. They do exist to be able to accommodate landowners to do something that is already prohibited. That is the old plan. There's a revised site plan. So that is not the actual plan. The revised site plan is better. It has accommodated everything. Can you go further down, please? The property, the property to the south is where I work. I live, basically I work 12 hours a day. I run a clinic in the property on the south, an urgent care clinic. So I know this property very well. It is where I spend 12 hours of my day. I have tried to do the best for this land. If I don't do any variances, I technically have 20 feet or 30 feet of land left. And there is no structure that is 20 feet. So I have tried to accommodate. I have given five feet to DOT, and I'm giving 50 feet away from the, proper, from the property on the south to accommodate for the storm water. I really don't think my resident on the, on the west is having an issue. There's a good solid fence. And when I did that fence, he was so happy that he went and finished his fence on the other side of the property. So he has a false, he has a three-sided fence. So it's not, I think my case I'm trying to say, it's easy to oppose, but I would wish for my opposition to look at that land and see that I am trying to do the best, best use of that land. That is where I spend 12 hours a day. Going towards Austere Road is not a problem. If you look at the clinic right there, I am 15, 20 feet from the Austere Road. The new property is going to be deeper. It's not even closer to Austere Road. It's a good 35 feet from Austere Road. On the side, Warren Drive is a very private street. 10 houses on the left, 10 houses on the right. So the best way is to have a rear parking so that cars can wait on Austere Road when the traffic is jammed at 4 p.m. <clears throat> the opposition was a lot about variances, but if you look at that land, 
there is no way I can achieve something without requesting the variance. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <clears throat> is there any time left for anyone else who's in support, if there is any such person? There's four minutes and 30 seconds. Is there anyone else in support who'd like to speak? If you're in jury duty, this is the wrong place, I can guarantee you. I've been in jury duty. I've already done it. I'll tell you what, I served 10 times in jury duty. Right. Um, so you're here to talk about Z19. This is not Z19. Okay. That's what I need to know. Where do I need to go? You're in the right place. Have a seat. I am in the right place. So we're not doing Z19 yet? Not yet. Thank God. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you can have a seat. We'll hear Thank from you. the opposition. Thank you and good morning. My name is Robin Meyer and I'm the uh, uh, co-chair of the zoning committee for the Mableton Improvement Coalition. Um, I very much appreciate um, the, the um, uh, Mr. Edgewa's interest in, in developing this property as commercial because given its location on Austell Road immediately across from the um, South Cobb High School, it does seem very likely that it should all be zoned commercial. Um, the fence is certainly a good start, um, but a fence does not, um, a fence is not sufficient buffer for a parking lot against a single family home. This is a very small lot. Uh, the two parcels together are uh, only, only about two-thirds of an acre. But the proposed development is simply too intense. We're not site designers, um, so I can't, I can't tell you exactly uh, what we would like to see on this property, but I can tell you that the variances required are just, um, are, are, are simply not suitable. Variances, um, Mr. Edgewa is correct, variances can be appropriate in certain circumstances. Um, but not from the get-go. Um, if, a, if a development requires a front setback variance, a major side setback variance, and a landscape buffer variance, um, then we think it needs a redesign. The way the building will sit, um, it will actually be closer to Warren Road than the homes, so um, it will sort of loom over that residential street. Um, the building will also be too close to Austell Road, perhaps not as close as, as the clinic building, uh, but certainly closer than, than the other new construction, which is um, coming along Austell Road. The site plan, the site plan needs revision. Um, the, the variances need to be reduced. Uh, the parking needs to come away from the single family home. Uh, perhaps it can be against that, their backyard, uh, but certainly not right next, next to, the, to their home. Um, there's no dumpster on the site plan. That's going to affect the number of parking spaces. And um, as Mr. Edgewa mentioned, the stormwater comments uh, mean that there's going to have to be a shift of the building uh, to the north, which would, which would further um, exacerbate the variant situation on the north. Um, we're in a position of, of recommending denial simply because we, we, that we're so far away from a site plan that we could be comfortable with. Um, we very much hope that there can be a site plan here for commercial development that we could support. Um, this application, as it's, as it's, it's now, burdens the Austell Road um, uh, streetscape with, with a building which will be out of place because of its location on the site, and, and it burdens the neighborhood with a, with a commercial building that's simply too large. The parking lot is too close to the adjacent home. And there are no elevations for this building, so we don't know what it's going to look like, and we don't really know who the tenants are, are likely to be. Um, this is across from South Cobb High School, so certainly we would look to the applicant to propose um, a list of uh, either acceptable businesses or businesses that he would not um, be having on this property. Um, right now, as if it were to be recommended for approval and, appro and subsequently approved, we could have everything here from 
pawn shops to vape shops to who the heck knows what. And uh, we think that's not suitable for um, property across from the high school. So we would ask that you, um, that you recommend denial of this application. We would encourage Mr. Edgewa to uh, refine his design and see if there is an application for this property, uh, perhaps a small office, uh, perhaps some smaller retail um, that would fit this, this, this admittedly difficult property. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Is there anyone, anyone else to speak in opposition? All right, then the public comment portion of this hearing is closed, and uh, this matter is in District 4. Uh, Commissioner Anderson will handle the matter. Thank you, Commissioner Boulogne. Would I be able to have that? So just to kind of lay out the order here, just um, be interested in hearing from the applicant first, um, and then um, from, from Mick on the opposition. Um, so can the applicant come back up just for a moment, please? Just had a couple follow-up questions. Thank you. Good morning. Oh, th thank you for your presentation, uh, Mr. Edra. So when you, in, in light of the comments from the opposition, I, I'd be curious to just kind of cut to the chase on it. Uh, is there a smaller version of this site plan that you've contemplated? Yes. And before I answer that question, I would like to make a revision. I feel like the opposition is working on an old site plan, okay. not a new site plan. She talks about dumpster. That size is approved for 36. It's supposed to be 33 parking spots. I have 36. So a site, a trash, is going to take one extra parking spot. I am 68% in Pervious area, it's supposed to be 70. So I still have some leeway to accommodate a dumpster. I can accommodate uh, variances, but that would mean I go shorter on the, on the size, but I do a double story. It's going to be more expensive for me, but if that variance is going to make them happy, I will look at making it a double story so that I have a lot of setbacks from Warren Road. Okay. Great. That is what I will be happy to do. The second issue I would like her to know, and I'm really making a pledge, is I know she says she's not a site plan designer, but it's always good when you have that in mind. Why? opposing. That lot is 120 feet deep. If I, if you see me here because of a denier, there's never going to be a situation where you could build on that lot without a variance. It's just the way it is. If I have 35 feet, 35 feet, that is already 70 plus a footpath, that gives me 30 feet of construction space. There has so many properties in Cobb County. There's one nice one across Campbell Middle School. It's a shopping center. It's exactly what I'm trying to do. It looks perfect. And it is, it went through the same zoning. It's 15 feet, it's opposite Campbell High School. So the best I can accommodate is a double story to have the square footage and to have for that distances from Warren Road. Okay. Great. Th thank you. Thank you had referenced the site plan that has been updated. Is that something that you, 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 you have and available to show? It's, it's in there, but I think she was working with the old site plan. After my initial meeting with the zoning committee, I made some adjustment. Is there, but she had the first site plan when we contacted each other a month ago. So she talks about 33 spots, but it's 36 spots. So she has issues with the trash, but that should not be an issue because I have more spots and I have 68% in previous area instead of 70. Okay. She talks about south bound to move the property up north. The new site plan, I am 50 feet away from the clinic. Okay. So I have a site plan that's dated from September 6th of of 2023, are you, are you saying that there is there is a more recent one? If you look on this slide, there were two site plans. 
I think she's, she looked at the first one to make her recommendation. Okay, but it is, what is the date of the most recent site plan that you have? Feb, February 24th, I sent it to... Okay. What? It's up there, we can just pull it down for her to see. Yep. If, if we could just see that, that would be helpful. Do we, do we have that in any of the packets? Or is that something that you have available? I'll, I'll show what's the site plan that's in the packet. I don't have the new site plan. Yeah, but it's still there. If you just go down, sir, you could find it. It's still down there. There were two site plans. Please. I see one. Just keep going down. Good. There, there. That is the old one. Yep. That's a new one. That is a new site plan, that one. Thank you. So she, okay. I send, I send Ms. Robin Maya the first site plan before I met with the zoning staff. So that is the updated site plan. I am, instead of 30 feet, I'm 50 feet behind okay. the clinic to accommodate for the stormwater. I have only 70 feet behind the building to accommodate the parking and the zoning, that is what I have. If I decrease the length of the building from 120 to 60, 80, it makes me away from Warren Road, then I make it a double story. But from the setbacks, anybody who owns this property wants to do something is always going to ask for a variance just because of the corner lot and the depth of the property. And she talks about pawn store. Listen, my clinic is next to this property. You would not believe that I will have a pawn store next to a medical center. So I take this passionately. I'm looking at after school education, I'm looking at a subway, so I will not have, it would, it, would, it would jeopardize my clinic. I run a clinic 12 hours a day. There is no way I would have a pawn store next to my clinic. <laughs> there is no way. So if you understand that it would actually ruin my own business, it would not be possible. I'm looking at things that help the South Cop students there's going to be maybe a subway restaurant. I'm looking at C2 after school education for those magnet school programs. I have a vision of what is going to be there. It's not going to be a pawn store, never. Never. I, I live there. I drive there. I walk right. there Monday through Friday, 12 hours a day. I will not have a pawn store next to me. So she should not be worried about what I'm going to have people use it, use it for. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, and just in terms of the, um, the other comments that have been made here, uh, would you, if, 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 if there is a version of the site plan, I think there's still some, some issues that still stand out that were not, might not have been addressed. Yes, sir. Um, but I, I, have you prepared any kind of stipulation letter that outlines buffering, landscaping? Um, on the comments? On, uh, for this particular site plan? Yes, on the comments from your staff, it was mentioned that I should do an eight feet fence between the residential. And I'm saying that I did that a year ago. Mm -hmm. So I did that in anticipation for this day. I have a solid fence. My neighbor, residential property, has from all behind me 200 feet and from the clinic to the end, I have a 350 feet linear fence to give him privacy. Okay. That was done already. I would love yeah. them to come with me and visit the site. Right. No, I've driven by the site. I know. And, Thank you. And I've Thank seen you. the site. And no, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about my opposition. Okay. No. Yes, not you. Yep. Yep. Okay, great. Well, um, yeah, my immediate reaction is, um, is probably um, 
some initial uh, reservation around increasing height. I think probably if there is a path forward, it probably has to do with a meaningful reduction in square footage. Um, but um, I want to open up the questions to my fellow commissioners to see if they have any additional questions of the applicant. Yes, sir. Um, I have a, just a few questions. What I understand is that you have a business. Is, is that already there or someplace else? Yes. There are three properties. I'm combining two properties. And you're going to add to it? I'm combining two properties on the Voro lots. But behind those properties is a business. It's a medical clinic. Yes, two properties combining. Yeah. On, on the lot. Well, and uh, when I, we are talking about the business, I'm talking about a medical center next to those two properties. Well, I, I do agree that, that this is uh, too much of a building for the lot size. I think that's a lot for that. And I would, if you do end up with a building, I would put stipulations like n no vaping shops, no um, pool halls. Absolutely. Yeah. That is guarantee. Do you have any questions? Okay. All right. I'm, uh, thank you for yeah. your questions. I'm, I'm actually going to just jump, um, change the order a little bit and uh, ask for planning just if, if they can explain um, the recommendation here and, and the thinking behind that. So I'd ask Mr. Peterson. Okay. The, the staff recommendation was to approve to NRC. Uh, with many conditions that would um, ensure that there would be a quality landscape buffer and site plan on the property, uh, as well, along with building architecture. Uh, one, one of the three variants he's asking for is to, is to reduce the landscape buffer. Staff is not supportive of that. We want a full 20-foot buffer with an eight-foot fence along the western property line. Um, the variances are understandable given the shape of the lot and the fact that he wants to have the building actually front uh, Austell Road, which is unique, and it'd probably be the first in the, on the corridor for that type of uh, look. Excellent. Thank you. And, and there's one thing I just want to clarify, Commissioner Anderson. Um, you know, we've been talking about a pawn shop on this property. A pawn shop's not permitted use in NRC anyway, so it, it could not go there to begin with. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Are there any other questions that staff, um, my fellow commissioners have of, of planning staff? Um, why, why is the back of the building facing Austell Road? Like, how do you get, I guess you get in from, the front of the building is at the parking lot, I'm assuming. Is that right? Am I looking at that right? We can have the applicant come back up to... Yes, the way I the way it was uh, told to me, I think it has a double fronts because there's an entrance on Austell Road with a sidewalk that goes up the road. The entrance is from Warren Road, so it's not the main entrance to the property is not going to be from Austell Road. It's going to be from Warren. It's like a rare entrance. We're talking about the storefronts, not the entrance road. The storefront is going to be. The signs of the building, whoever is renting, is going to be off Austell Road. Okay. So they're going to walk around. So they're going to, uh, the customer will come and somehow walk around the building to get to the entrance. The, the, if there's, there's a parking on the, on the south side of the building, yes. there's going to be at least a five feet walkway, concrete walkway. So the customers are going to use the right parking, and they're going to use the walkway into the property. OK, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? OK. Yep. So, uh, so just to summarize, uh, uh, what, did anybody else, on, do any of my fellow commissioners want to call up any other uh, staff members? Yeah. This time? Yeah, OK, great. So I'll summarize. So, 
So I think what, um, and I had a chance to speak with Commissioner Hughes uh, about this, and I think um, we've obviously heard the, the input um, from, from, from Mableton Improvement Coalition. And um, a couple things kind of stand out for this site, uh, for the applicant to consider. Um, this is, um, as is, a, a square footage that um, reads too intense uh, for this particular location. And the kind of notion of a two-story concept is probably secondary in my mind to um, just making the building a smaller square footage um, in order to accommodate and be compliant and consistent with some of the setbacks. Um, furthermore, I think um, a stipulation letter would be particularly helpful um, to identify things um, that you're willing to commit to um, and it, as part of any revised site plan, that would be around uses, that would be around uh, hours of operation, that would be around elevations to how the site would look from each of the sites. sides. Um, a, as of now, I, would, uh, uh, I think the feedback I, that I've gotten um, is that the, the site plan as currently constructed does not necessarily meet those, and, but uh, I think there is possibly a, another, one, another opportunity to incorporate some of these changes and these feedbacks, feed, feedback that, um, that I think would, would be useful to see from the applicant. So my, my motion at, at this time would be to hold this for another 30 days with guidance to the applicant to um, construct a site plan that um, is consistent um, in terms of not requiring any setback variances. Um, um, number two, has more specificity around uses. And I think number three um, provides a little bit more clarity around buffer and placement of dumpsters. And so that would be helpful for us to consider as part of a new site plan. So my motion would be to hold this for 30 days in order to allow the time, applicant time to do that. We have a motion. Can I have a second? Second. Call the question. By a vote of three to zero, we're going to hold that till the uh, May calendar. Okay. All right. Next, next case is rezoning case Z11, Salt Springs LLC, request rezoning from NS to LI for an office and warehouse in land lot 35 of the 17th district. The property is located on the west side of Old Floyd Road and on the north side of Center Street. Is the applicant present? The director of the applicant is here. Is there anyone here opposed? Rezoning case Z11. Two. Two. Okay, let the record show those two people opposed. All those who wish to address the board, please come forward to be sworn in. Good morning. My name is Tom Miller. Uh, I am the owner of Salt Springs LLC. So uh, this building has been there since 1972. In its current condition, it has been there for about 20 years in the operation of the form that it is. Before that, it was a tool rental company. And currently, we would like to run a plumbing company out of it. Um, at the moment, we don't intend to change anything with the site plan, and we are looking to remodel. It's a two-story building. We are looking to remodel the upstairs, make it a little bit nicer, and put in some offices. Uh, no additional warehouse upstairs. Uh, we don't plan on changing the outside of the property at all, except for making it nicer. Does anybody have any questions before I step down? Well, this wouldn't be the time for that quite yet, but okay. anything else you'd like to show us? You have a lot of time. No, it's pretty straightforward and simple. Um, we've already been through the zoning committee and they didn't recommend any changes at all. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor of this proposal? All right, is there anyone in opposition? My name is Robin Meyer and I co-chair the Zoning Committee for the Mableton Improvement Coalition. Um, 
We, um, we're, we're happy to see a use for this property, which is more in keeping with the uh, consumer-facing businesses that we would like to attract to our community. But we are very disappointed that, the, that there does not seem to be a concrete plan for improving the property. Um, this is very close to Mableton Elementary School. It's close to the new park at the Mableton Town Square. And it's also close to the first new residential development in the old historic part of Mableton. So um, this building has been here for a very long time and, and candidly is showing its age. Um, things in this part of Mableton are changing and we would very much like to see this property change with it. Um, there are serious stormwater issues called out in the staff analysis um, with um, some mitigation um, steps laid out. But those improvements uh, are required during quote unquote plan review and permitting. But um, to our knowledge, this would not be going through plan review because it's the, the changes to the property are not significant enough to, to trigger that. So this lot is estimated to be um, over 78% impervious with no stormwater management. So right now, according to the staff analysis, the, the um, um, stormwater runs off into the adjacent property, which is the First Baptist Church. There, there is, on the site plan, there's no indication of where the dumpster pad uh, would be and, and no indication that it's going to be connected to sanitary sewer, which was one of the stormwater recommendations. The, um, this is the view of the property from Old Floyd Road. Um, this is the view a little bit further down the street. So you can see the building is quite dated. It's, it's great to hear that they have plans for, for improving the aesthetics, but we, we don't know what those plans might be. Um, and I certainly understand that they, you know, that, that, that those, those sorts of plans can, can, could, could be great, um, but it would be great to have them on the record. Uh, it's easy for an it's you know it's an existing owner coming and making promises about what a property is going to look like. Um, it, it's wonderful. We we always want to see improvement in the community, but it may be that this that this property is not always owned by the current ownership and not always um, occupied by this particular tenant. So zoning conditions, because they run with the land, are very important for the future. Um, the um, the chain link we would like to. S the chain link fence surrounds the property um, and is a very in industrial look. Um, and then this is the uh, view from the side street. Uh, the, the tenant has, has moved in. Um, we're not entirely sure what that sort of halfway underground building is, but there, um, it is not especially scenic to say the least. Um, we look forward to, um, uh, to a good plan for this property, one that removes the um, excess impervious surface, that puts some, um, uh, some degree of stormwater management in place. We understand this is not a new build, so it might not be perfect, but uh, we do think some improvements ought to be made there. Um, we would like to see a landscape and fencing plan that protects the company's property. We understand that's very, very important, um, but, uh, but a plan that creates a better streetscape than a six foot tall chain link fence. Um, the pole sign needs to be removed. Um, the partially underground building in the middle of the parking lot either needs to be removed or it needs uh, to certainly be spiffed up a bit. Uh, and there needs to be, obviously, some ongoing, some ongoing landscape maintenance for this property. Um, if, we were, if, we, if we had a plan like that, we, would, we could very much look forward to, uh, uh, to working together for, um, uh, for a a project that we would recommend approval for, but at this point, um, without a plan like that, we would ask that you recommend denial. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else to speak in opposition? All right. Hearing, seeing no one, the public comment portion of the uh, hearing on this matter is closed. And again, this is in District 4, and Commissioner Anderson has graciously agreed to lead the discussion. Thank you, thank you, Chair, uh, Vice Chair Boulogne. My first uh, kind of set of questions will be for planning, and then if possible I'd like to have the applicant come back up. So um, for um, Mr. Peterson, just before we go into the recommendation, just can you confirm if, if this would be going through site plan review or not, uh, if um, as currently submitted? 
as currently submitted, I don't believe it would be going through site plan review. Uh, as I understand it, most of the improvements are going to be done on the inside of the building, which site plan review does not review. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and then can you also talk about your recommendation? I think you had the um, deletion to NRC with special exemption, uh, but there were a couple variances that were um, deleted. Specifically, I think it was the waiver of the minimum lot size uh, because of the existing conditions understood, um, and also, also reducing the minor side setback. The, um, can, you, can you talk a little bit about that and specifically uh, why um, deletion of, of two? Yes, uh, you know, they came in here requesting to be zoned to light industrial, which has uh, a lot more requirements as far as uh, lot size and setbacks. So if it's deleted down to NRC, then variance number two and four go away, and they're not required to be, you know, that size in NRC. Uh, NRC has a lot size of 20,000 square feet and they have 32,000. And then the side setback, under light industrial would be 20 feet, but under NRC it's 15 feet. So okay. those two variances would just go away if it was deleted to NRC. Okay, yeah, thank you for clarifying that. Um, do any of my fellow uh, commissioners have any questions of the planning staff? Okay, great. And then, um, do you, you did not, Commissioner? Okay, great. And then uh, could I also have the, um, I'm going to uh, call up the applicant as well, again. Good morning. Good morning. Th thank, thank you for the history on the site. Um, I had a chance to go and, and, and visit the site and see a lot of the, the, um, the, the Panther plumbing trucks around there. Is that, is that um, a lease? to the actual uh, Panther Plum, or is that your actual company that, and you're an owner-occupant of the site? Um, Panther Plumbing is leasing from Salt Springs, but I own both. Okay, got it. So, so right now the, um, and, and how long has Panther Plumbing been leasing? Um, Since October. Since October, okay. When we purchased the property, we assumed that we could have a plumbing company out of it. And when we applied for a certificate of occupancy, we were told that it was zoned for retail. Uh, clearly, the property has never been retail or will ever be retail in any circumstances. And so now we have to go through the rezoning. I would like to invest in the property and make it better. Obviously, I want to invest in the community and make it better. Um, but. I have to have the industrial because of the equipment that we have. If we do not have that, um, I will guess that the property will go back to being overgrown like it was when we got there. And the countless hours where I've cut down trees and had people out there working and cleaning up the parking lot, and I know it is still not to my standard um, and maybe not to the community standards, but the before pictures that I wish I could show you right now were significantly different than what they are now. Um, I am a little bit embarrassed that my landscaper hasn't done a good job um, by some of the pictures, and I will get with them and correct them on that behavior. Uh, we have spent a lot of time and effort cleaning this property up. Mm -hmm. It was not inhabitable when we moved into it. We had to demo the upstairs out of necessity, not because it, because it was creating a hazard. Mm -hmm. um, and we have had to cut down a lot of overgrowth, um, so much overgrowth. Like, I would guess that I've spent thirty to forty thousand dollars already cutting down overgrowth. So I don't mind investing in the property, but I do need. There is a breaking point on that. Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah, and, and I've done some research on it. I've been to the site and walked and. You can kind of see, even just looking at the history on Google Maps of kind of how it's evolved over time. And, you know, there was a site across the street used to have, like, you know, uh, furniture strewn across, um, which the, has been cleared out. And so... It, I would say two blocks down, there's a, another industrial place 
that has furniture strewn out all over the, crate, over the place. There's a homeless encampment uh, in the woods about 200 foot from the property. Um, I've already had to ha call the police to have the homeless removed from my property. Um, security is of high value. Um, I don't, as far as the appearance goes, um, obviously we're going to pressure wash the outside and get everything copacetic and looking nice. I can't run a proper business with it looking shabby. Um, I don't understand the objections, especially since the building's been there for over 50 years. Yeah. And are, are you aware that there's a kind of a sm the small area plan which kind of divide, de defines what the intentions are in terms of the walkability, the livability of that area? Are, it was included in the, I don't know if you have a chance to look at it, but the staff comments where they speak about what the vision for that kind of location is. Have you had a chance, are, are aware of those? I'm not aware of those. Okay. Um, those are, those are, those are useful in terms of thinking about what, what the vision of redeveloping and the character of the area would want to become and, and I think have some um, community driven guidelines around that. Um, obviously recommendations, but you know, certainly give some context. Um, the what, question for you is on, um, in terms of the, um, the storm order comments, and since this would apparently not be going through site plan review, um, and you're kind of in excess right now of, of what the, um, what's, what's typically allowed. Uh, have you done any analysis or thought around improvements to the site that would um, address some of the concerns that the opposition has brought up, particularly around stormwater management and impervious uh, coverage that's currently there? Um, no, the reason being is there are about 10 properties that drain the same way mine do, um, all in that area. And until something can be made as a community effort, I don't know why I would be singled out. There are other properties that drain onto my property, and they flow right to the church, just like everything else. Okay. And uh, would you be, and, and I'd be curious, what, what is that? We, the opposition pointed out an underground or uh, would look like a, a covered area. I don't know if it was a um, storage area or. It's just an awning that they put there. Just like an awning. A carport. A carport, okay. Yeah, we don't, uh, we store material there. Okay. Um, we do have one piece of equipment underneath there, but it's nothing of substantial value, so to speak. Okay. And I think in your application, you mentioned even storing an excavator on site. Is that? Yes. Okay, is that something that current, that, that is already is being stored on site? I'm sorry? Is, is that already being stored on site or is that part of the request for future use? Um, currently it's being stored there because we going through the zoning issue. Okay. Um, All right. And um, for the exterior of the site, have you um, engaged a, a designer, or an architect to prepare some elevations that might show what um, this could either be, what the exterior of the building might look like, or is it just simply we're going to repaint it? Uh, at the moment, um, we, get, we only have so many funds. Okay. So we would like to make it better. It is on my to-do list, mm -hmm. but I cannot invest or spend any more additional um, money on the property until this is resolved. It is not a, it is not a thing that I can financially support if it is not rezoned and it will go back to the previous owner. And once it does that, who knows how long it'll be before somebody actually tries to improve the property. Right. Um, you look at our brand Panther plumbing and it is a very sharp, clean brand. Mm -hmm. And you look at our previous places that we have inhabited, they have all been sharp and clean. That is the objective, but it does take money. And I am not a wealth of money. Like I don't have a cash fountain out back in my backyard, mm -hmm. just like anybody else. I do want to invest in the community, but there's only much, so much I have to invest. Great. Thank you. 
Are there any other questions my fellow commissioners have? No? Okay. Thank you. No, that's good. Thank you. Yep, we have a comment from Commissioner Lindstrom. I have a comment, um, and you don't need to, <clears throat> the owner does not need to come back up. But I do understand that Cobb County itself wants to be an inviting place to live and also invite companies to, to be home to. <clears throat> but I understand the opponent, the opposition to it, because it's an eyesore and it would have been nice to see it cleaned up um, like you were, yeah, get, get onto that arc, get onto that landscaper. <laughs> um, and I understand the lack of funds for this. It's a hard one. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, And yeah, so first of all, does anybody else on the, any of my fellow commissioners want to call up any other staff members? Okay. Um, I, I would like to call up the stormwater um, staff. And this is more just so to provide some guidance as to, to see if there's any path forward on stormwater. Um, in terms of interventions. Yes, Andrew Heath, Cobb County Stormwater Management. Great. Thank you, Andrew. Um, so you noted in the comments that this site is about 78%, um, um, so 8% over what's permitted in terms of impervious surface. Um, what are the options for the applicant if, um, since this would not go through a site plan review, what are their options on the table for addressing any stormwater, bringing up to standard? Right, so one option is to just remove some impervious from the site uh, that was in maybe in some unneeded area that would reduce the impervious area to not exceed the allowed the zoning maximum allowed. Um, so that would be one option. Or um, they could potentially explore doing something where they captured some of the runoff from the site to provide some what we refer to as mitigation for that amount that they're over uh, the maximum allowed. Um, so I think either of those options could work for the site. And um, I believe the applicant, although this isn't stormwater related, I believe the applicant is proposing some ADA access uh, work on the, would be the east side of the building, I think. And so I don't know exactly what sort of permits, you know, that might be required for that, but if it pleased the board, they could re require the applicant to, you know, obtain a, uh, you know, a permit and roll those things together, and that could be reviewed together if you wanted to do that. Okay. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, so, Andrew, uh, have you met yet with the applicant to explore possible, very cost efficient or cost effective, low or relatively low cost uh, mitigation concepts? I don't believe we have. Uh, in my comments, I'd uh, recommended that we have a concept meeting, you know, before they get started on anything. But definitely, I can provide them my contact information. We could definitely sit down together and just talk about that. Thank you. Great. Um, I have a, qu a question. Do you have any feel for how much it would cost to remove some of that uh, pavement that's there? Um, I would hate to venture a guess at the cost of it. Okay. Um, um, you know, 8% of the site would no doubt be probably a few hundred square feet of paving um, that would have to be, you know, hauled off and removed from the site. So it wouldn't be inexpensive, but then again, installing some sort of mitigation on site wouldn't exactly be inexpensive. That the providing the mitigation on the site might be a little bit more expensive. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, it could be something, though, if it Please, the board. We could meet with the um, applicant, and then the applicant could, you know, explore each of those options and see what they wanted to do. Or they may even have some uh, some other ideas. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you. I think that would be a good idea. Excellent. All right. So yeah. So so this time I th I think um, 
this just summarizes. I think the, the, the fact that there's a small area plan which um, defines the vision for this as being more of a redevelopment over time is, is important to keep into consideration. Obviously, it's a policy guideline, not a mandate per se, but it's one that um, I think is important and, and speaks to some of the comments from the opposition as to ways to improve this uh, particular strip. Um, there are some industrial uses adjacent to it, self-storage across the street, uh, an auto shop down block north, but um, they are also changing conditions. Um, I, I think w w based on just speaking with Commissioner Hughes, speaking um, just and getting an update on this uh, and going to the site and seeing it, I think one of the things that we'd probably like to see is additional work around how would you clean up this site if this were approved? Um, how would you address the storm order? How would you look at the landscaping? How would you look at treatment of the buffer uh, of the, the dumpster um, and making sure that those are kind of specified within a um, actual formal stipulation letter? Um, I think that would be um, uh, prudent for the app for the applicant to at least see if there is a, a an opportunity to um, significantly spruce up the the existing operations while while still being respectful of some of the constraints um, that exist on the site. So my motion in that regard would be to hold this until um, May and just with the applicant working towards creating a detailed stipulation letter that specifies some of those uh, elements around cleanup and stormwater. We have a motion, second? Second, second. Any, any further discussion? No. Call the question. Question passes by uh, three to zero to hold to next month with instruction. And at, at this time, the uh, clerks have instructed me that this would be an appropriate time for a break.
Jason has a housekeeping matter. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman Board, we did have the applicant and opposition come together for one of your cases. So I think we can amend the consent agenda one more time and add one more case to the consent agenda. And that would be uh, SLEP4, Vacuum Tech LLC, uh, who, re who request a special land use permit for uh, used auto and truck sales in land lot 377 and 378 of the 18th district. The property is located on the south side of Oak Ridge Commerce Way, north of Oak Ridge Commerce Road. The applicant is present. Is there anyone here opposed to SLEP4? The direct show is no one opposed. So our first, our first motion would be to amend the consent agenda to add it, and then I'll give you the conditions after that. Okay, and, and this is also in District 4, so Commissioner Anderson. I would move to add SLUP4 to the consent agenda. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? I voted, sorry. Okay, so a second? Yes. <laughs> okay, so we have a second. Call the question. Okay, and then the staff would recommend uh, SLEP4 be approved, subject to no on-street parking, and subject to the staff recommendation contained in the zoning analysis. Okay, is there a particular page on the zoning analysis, or is that is that sufficient? It's the staff recommendation in the zoning analysis. Okay, all right. And no on-street parking. So that that is the uh, staff recommendation, Mr. Anderson, again. I would move to approve uh, SLUP4 with the staff recommendations and no on-street parking as stipulations. Second? Is there a second? A second. Can we have a second? Any discussion? Call the question. Okay. That passes by a vote of three to zero. So that is added to the consent agenda with those conditions. Okay. Now we're ready for the next case? Yes, and the next zoning case has a companion special landings permit with it. Would it be the board's desire to hear both together? Yes. Okay, I'll call both together. Rezoning case Z13 of 2024, St. Benedict's Episcopal School requests a rezoning from R20 to OI for a school in land lot 695 of the 17th district, located on the west side of Cooper Lake Road, north of Dana Street, together with a special landings permit SLEP 3 of 2024, St. Benedict's Episcopal School requests a special land use permit for a school in Landlot 695 of the 17th District. The property is located on the west side of Cooper Lake Road, north of Dana Street. The applicant is present for both cases. Is there anyone here opposed to these cases? Let the record says no one opposed. All right, Mr. Moore. Good morning, Commissioners. I hope you're doing well. I'm Kevin Moore here on behalf and pleased to represent. Uh, St. Benedict's Episcopal School uh, in this rezoning and special land use permit application uh, as we uh, revisit a site uh, that was um, de debated heavily uh, and ultimately approved uh, by the Board of Commissioners uh, here at the intersections of Daniel Street, Cooper Lake Road, and Weaver Street. Uh, what we're bringing though for you today is not to redo what was approved uh, by the Board of Commissioners in August of 2022. Uh, as shown on your screen, uh, there's an additional piece of property uh, that was not included in that application that was approved for St. Benedict's. Uh, this is a 0.65 acre tract. It's zoned R20 on Cooper Lake, and I'll show you how that orients in a minute. But just want to show you exactly where it is and see that really this R20 tract uh, is bounded on all sides uh, by uh, Office and Institutional OI zoning, uh, which includes uh, the subject the larger track which the school will be located on or the portion of the school. Uh, so the application for you today uh, in its simplest form is to rezone the small track from R20 to OI uh, as well as included as part of a special land use permit application which is SLUP 3 so that it can be added to uh, the 2022 uh, overall project that was approved and simply added as additional property and we'll kind of explain that and give you some context so that you can have a full understanding. So first what I want to do is uh, make sure you're aware of what was actually approved in 2022 by the Board of Commissioners at this location. And what's on your screen now is the approved site plan uh, and carpool circulation plan. Uh, that was approved as part of the uh, rezoning and special land use permit approved by the Board of Commissioners in August of 2022. To orient you, uh, this is uh, Daniel Street, 
here as it moves out towards Atlanta Road. This is Cooper Lake Road here. Daniel Street as it turns and goes down the side of the property here, and then Weaver Street here. Uh, this was the site plan and layout that was approved uh, at that point in time. The property we're talking about today to add is this piece here uh, that is kind of a notch out of this property that's zoned R20. Uh, this is the piece that we're simply adding uh, to what was approved in 2022, along with an updated uh, site plan that shows the additional phases as requested by the Board of Commissioners, which they will also hear as another business application per the approved conditions and minutes uh, from 2022. So let's turn now to how this incorporates into the overall site plan. Can you help me with that? Just get it right, yeah. There we go. So this is the site plan now, which incorporates the 0.65 acres to be rezoned, hopefully, from R20 to O&I, which is certainly the appropriate category, uh, given it's surrounded by O&I zoning, and then included within the slot for this overall tract, uh, which would increase the overall tract to over 4.8 acres. Uh, we are not proposing any buildings or improvements uh, on the 0.65 acres that are being added. It'll simply be uh, additional landscaping and open space for the overall campus, but it does fit our parcel more and kind of puts it together as an entire parcel without having that notch and also gives us that additional space uh, for aesthetic purposes and enjoyment by the school. Uh, as you can see, the design and layout uh, is the same as was approved in 2022. Uh, access is on Daniel Street here with circulation uh, for carpool. Uh, exactly the same as what was approved in 2022. Uh, just for information purposes, there is an emergency access at Daniel and Weaver Street here, and no access on Cooper Lake. What's also shown uh, are the future phases or the, that have now been finalized by uh, St. Benedict's, uh, which include uh, primarily the big, biggest change is the inclusion of a gymnasium building. That's just a gym building for the middle school. Uh, the prior plan only had the, uh, the main classroom building and main school building here of 30,000 square feet, and this was a play field or an open field that now uh, will house uh, the gym. We are also showing a very small uh, outdoor uh, classroom, uh, which is located here. That's essentially that's a gazebo uh, for an outdoor classroom uh, for students, uh, as well as the future area for a cafeteria. Uh, part of the approval in 2022, one of the stipulations uh, that we agreed to in our stipulation letter, as well as that was specified by the Board of Commissioners in their vote to approve, uh, was that future phases, which, which were contemplated, uh, would be brought back to the Board as part of another business application. So that's why this has actually three applications uh, to get to the end result that we are looking for. Uh, but that, hopefully that explains a little bit about why this is uh, processing as it is. Importantly, this proposal does not request or seek any change modifi or modification to any of the existing stipulations and conditions of which there were many. Uh, the prior application uh, that was approved in 2022 lasted over a year. Uh, there were tremendous discussions uh, that occurred and studies that occurred with Department of Transportation, tremendous number of meetings that occurred uh, throughout that period of time with neighbors and community associations uh, to get to the point where it was approved by the board in 2022. Uh, that approval came with uh, our agreement with Department of Transportation to a specific carpool circulation plan, as well as to a specific maximum number of students, which is not going unchanged by this application. The maximum number of students is at 240. Well, it's actually the lesser of 240 students or uh, the maximum amount of carpool circulation plus 20%, whatever is less, so that uh, really the enrollment is, is determined by the amount of carpool, cir carpool circulation that we can contain on site uh, as a cap on that. In addition, uh, there were a number of conditions and stipulations related uh, to the carpool cir circulation plan uh, that ensured that it would work as proposed here and that if it is for any reason is not working, it provides specifically for the opportunity for DOT to step in uh, and require mitigation measures, whether that's uh, adjusting class times or uh, slotting class times or 
you know, staggering class time through any other mitigation measures that DOT feels would be necessary in the event that the carpool circulation plan uh, interrupts uh, or causes impacts uh, beyond what are anticipated along Daniel and Weaver Street. Uh, the uh, conditions and stipulations of that rezoning case, which was Z78 of 2021, even though it was approved in 2022, uh, remain unchanged and unaltered. Uh, the only modification we are seeking is simply uh, approval of the new site plan that shows the additional phases as required by the Board of Commissioners. Uh, and to include the additional property, the 0.65 acres, so that we have a full tract of 4.8. Uh, and otherwise, there are no changes proposed whatsoever. Uh, and we want to make sure that we keep those in place uh, as, as was agreed upon at the time. I'm here to answer any questions that you may have. Also, Brian Sullivan of St. Benedict's is here as well. So we're happy to answer your questions and respectfully request uh, your recommendation of approval as your planning staff has also recommended approval. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> is there anyone else here wishing to speak on this matter? Okay, then we'll uh, turn this over to uh, Commissioner Anderson. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Boulogne. Uh, really, the only question I had is the um, the, the current status of the um, a a existing buildings um, that, you know, that were approved as part of Z78. Um, so just to clarify, there's, there's no construction that's going on at this point, right? We're, this is subject to the, o, o, the OB approval, correct? That's correct. There's no, there's no current construction. It was, it's anticipated to begin in 25, 26. Right. Okay. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure it was clear to everyone. Sure. Of okay. course. Uh, Happy to. Yeah. I didn't have, um, given that this is really a, um, an addition of an open space and um, to a, a, to make a more comprehensive site plan. I didn't have any immediate questions, but I'd open it up to my fellow commissioners if they did. Okay. Thank you. Great. So with that, uh, I, sorry, I, I would like to make a motion to uh, recommend approval uh, subject to the following. I'm just Zoning case first. I know we have to do this again for the slup. And so I'm just going to read off the uh, staff recommendations. So my motion is to recommend approval subject to the following. All stipulations applied to the school site by previous case Z78 of 2021, including letter of agreeable conditions from Kevin Moore dated August 10th, 2022. No stadium lighting by the field. However, lighting shall be allowed on the field, all site outdoor lighting to be environmentally sensitive with shields. District commissioner to approve the final lighting plan. Uh, that was stipulation B. Stipulation C, during the time period when there is no construct, during the pe time period when there is no construction or no build, there shall be maintenance of the property. Stipulation D, construction hours Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. until 6 p.m. Step E, all other phases shall be brought back to the Board of Commissioners as other business. Step, step F, final site plan and elevations to be approved by the District Commissioner. Step G, final carpool, car, carpool plan to be approved by the District Commissioner. Step H, regarding the carpool plan, Department of Transportation to review upon request by the neighborhood or school. And if a parking restriction is justified along a public roadway, then DOT shall take the necessary steps to enact pursuant to the typical department practice set by board approved criteria and applicable code sections. Step I, final landscaping plan and architectural renderings to come back to the district commissioner for final approval. And step J, all staff comments and recommendations, including the most recent DOT comments last revised August 1st, 2022, attached and made part of the minutes, not otherwise in conflict. Yes. I do have one question regarding stipulation 1B regarding the stadium lighting. Um, that was when there was a field here, but the gym has taken the place of the field. So could we do away with that condition, Mr. Moore, or do you want to hold on to it? 
I would like to keep it in. Okay. Just so that everything is consistent with the same conditions that were approved. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, just so there's no confusion among the public. Okay. But I appreciate the question. Okay. Okay. All right. We have a motion. Is there a second? You will put that on consent too. So the question was raised by staff as to whether this can go on consent with the board. Uh, I've given that there's no opposition, and I would also move to have this put on the consent agenda as well for the board. Okay. So we have a. I agree. We have a motion second. We better let's just vote on that to make sure we cover. Okay, and that passes three to zero. Next, next motion. I. So this is for the SLUP, correct? Yes, three. Okay. So I'd like to move to uh, approve SLUP three. And I, I guess I, I will. Second. Uh, can we? Do I have to read in uh, all of the? Okay, just do subject to the same conditions as uh, rezoning case Z13. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> Motions but, were made um, for approval yeah. subject to conditions. Do we have a second? Yes. Second. All right, we have a second. Call the question. And that also passes by a vote of three to zero. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's three to zero. Right. I'd say passes the, the motion to recommend passes, to be clear. Three zero, thank you. All right. Next case. Okay, next case is rezoning case Z15 of 2024, Dillon Investments LLC, request rezoning from LRO and R80 to LRO and R80 for professional office and single family residence in land lot 428 of the 19th district. Property is located on the north side of Mackin Road and on the west side of Villarica Road. The applicant is present, and earlier there was one person here opposed. All those who wish to address the board, please come forward. You're sworn in. Good morning. For the record, my name is Park South for the law firm of Sam's Lockton and Huff, and I represent uh, the applicant in regards to this rezoning application before you. Uh, this case was on the consent agenda previously because uh, it met all the zoning criteria that the staff reviewed and, and recommended approval and also recommended be on the consent agenda uh, because of lack of controversy. And uh, I believe that there really isn't much controversy here when you go through the actual facts. This is a, an existing house that was converted into an insurance agency uh, in 2016. Uh, it, it, this is a current picture of it, and you can see how it looks like a, a house, but it is an insurance agency. And my client spent quite a sum of money to make it into a, a, a commercial business, uh, and a business that's appropriate for the area and appropriate with the LRO's, LRO zoning. Uh, and that, in fact, is uh, what we have here. Now, the issue has come up in that they have no longer operating the insurance agency in the zoning that was done in 2015. So that's a long time ago. I know 2015 sounds recently, but it's actually a long time ago. So uh, time has passed, and they're no longer uh, operating the insurance agency, and they'd like to sell the property uh, in the a zoning condition that was put on this when it was done in 2015 was that it not only had to be an insurance agency only, but that it had to be their insurance agency. Uh, obviously not really a constitutional way to handle it, uh, and the appropriate thing is, is that a professional office be in there. And the reason why I came to this is I actually met with a potential buyer who was going, going to have a uh, clinic in there, uh, professional office in there, but they financing was held up because of the concerns about the zoning condition. The zoning condition had to be changed, had to be changed as part of a full zoning uh, application. And also uh, the fact that the property has two zonings. It's properly, its property is split between an R80 uh, in the back and LRO up front. So I'd like to give you some orientation to the subject property where we're at. So we're on uh, Macklin Road heading uh, west from the uh, Patter Springs Road area heading west. 
uh, going out towards Paulding County. And as you know, if, if you travel this road, uh, Dallas Highway is the east-west route, and then Macklin Road is the second east-west route in West Cobb. Uh, right now, DOT is expanding uh, Macklin Road as it goes into Paulding County, and then we know that they've done the Windy Mac extension extended all the way through. So this is a major arterial thoroughfare east-west connector, and you can see uh, the Dillon Agency sits at the corner of uh, Villarica Road and Macklin Road. Uh, and then as I brought this bigger view up because you need to understand the context of it. This is a signalized intersection. Uh, then you keep going further west, you have a, a large LRO piece, and you notice the depth of that LRO piece. That's a funeral home. Uh, that Mays Ward funeral home is located there. And then as you keep going west, uh, you have uh, centered at, at uh, Lost Mountain and Macklin Road. You have a significant amount of commercial businesses. You have Kroger, Dunkin' Donuts, a uh, multitude of, of businesses there zoned NRC. Uh, and then the other quadrant of that is a very active uh, church, Methodist church, that actually goes all the way back to our intersection at Villa Rica. So quite a bit of activity in the area. And you saw the, the picture of the um, insurance agency in the converted house. So this is the subject property. Again, LRO on the front. The back po portion, one parcel, is zone R80. And that was done in 2015 uh, as a way to kind of create a step, step down. Uh, but that has created some real issues and concerns because when I met with this potential buyer, their lender was very concerned, like, well, I'm buying an R80 piece of property, but I can't use it. It doesn't have any use. So what we're doing is we're asking the LRO to be allowed for uh, professional office only. That's your staff recommendation. Uh, and that the R80 piece, which is an 80,000 square foot lot, be allowed to be used for uh, one residential house. You can see R80 is the predominant zoning uh, going north, both you know, east and west of the subject property, with the exception of, and again, you see the Mays Ward funeral home and the depth of that LRO piece. So we're actually keeping the LRO piece really close up to Villarica Road, uh, or, excuse me, close to Macklin Road at that signalized intersection, very, very busy, busy area. Again, close up of the property, you can see how a house placed on the back of the property and the R80 portion of it uh, makes sense given the area. Uh, you know, how many times have, you know, those commissioner, planning commissioners in other parts of the counties in East and South County, you know, to talk about a, a R80 piece of property is, is kind of, kind of novel, uh, but that's what we do in this area. So uh, putting a house on two acres makes sense. Again, this is showing now the split zoning in. And again, I want to show you uh, the house and how it's viewed, the LRO structure, uh, the signalized intersection. Uh, your staff analysis includes the traffic counts. You got 31,000 cars per day on Macklin Road, uh, over 5,000 cars per day on Villa Rica Road. Got a middle school, uh, high school uh, down Villa Rica. It's a very, very active area. And so, what we're talking about is uh, just allowing the professional office to occupy that house rather than limiting it to an insurance agency and limiting it specifically to the Denlin insurance agency is appropriate because any professional office would make sense in this area. Uh, and in fact, the goal for everyone should be that the user of that property be successful because to maintain a house, uh, an old house that's been converted to an office use takes money. So the goal should be that whatever goes there, should be successful and should be a, have an opportunity to be successful and allowing any professional office there uh, consistent with uh, the arc, the house remaining uh, is makes sense. And then your staff has worked, gone through it and recommended approval. Uh, here's the staff recommendations and we agree with every one of the conditions that the staff has put as the recommendation, recommendation for approval. As I said, uh, this was in fact previously on the, on the consent agenda uh, for obvious reasons. And again, I'd like to just point out how Bill Recker Road, I think the, the person who opposed and uh, is going to speak in opposition to this. Um, do we have a pointer? Is there a way I can point up there? I guess not. So the, uh, this is a, if you drive this area, this is a large horse farm, big, huge barn, big arena area. If we want to talk about how low intensity R80 is, you need to understand the horse operations that are, have a lot of traffic and such. 
the, the person who's opposed actually is beyond that, uh, kind of in this area here. So I, I'm not sure what impact having an R80 house uh, on Villarica Road close to Macklin Road has on them. Uh, they seem to think it, it's a negative uh, impact on them, but uh, it's consistent with the R80 that's throughout this area, putting a house on it. And if, if, you're, if the goal and intent is to preserve this area, what better way than to do it than to have the corner, an LRO uh, converted house, limited to professional office only, and then behind it, if you build an R80 home, that, that stops it. There's no one gonna be able to come back in later and say that LRO should be deeper because the, uh, or the uh, funeral home is deeper. Uh, there's no one that's gonna come in and say the whole thing should be redeveloped into a, a, a traditional office building on all 2.8 acres if in fact you in fact make that a buildable r80 lot and that's all we're asking for it creates a lot of confusion and it's not really in the staff's interest to have a split zoning on a piece of property and in this case it it messed up a sale uh to somebody that would have been a great user for that house as a professional office uh, because their lender could not get comfortable with a split zoning on the property uh, despite me explaining what it, what it all meant uh, so what we need to do is have an actual R80 lot, an LRO lot, professional office only, and uh, you can see the quality of the house that, that my client has preserved and that has been good for the area. So I appreciate your time, and I appreciate your consideration of this case. We ask that you follow your staff uh, recommendation for approval. Well, thank you. All right, thank you. Anyone else for the applicant at this time? All right, we'll go to the opposition. Afternoon, Commissioners. Brian Dodrell with Chicago Robertson Dodrell on behalf of Elizabeth Kenny, who's located at 1701 Villa Rick Road. Um, the applicant has glossed over the history on this property a little bit, and I think it's important to look at that. In 2015, they came forward with a rezoning to put that house, that's existing house that was on R80 property, to rezone it to uh, low-rise office and over staff's recommendation of denial the county approved it but approved it based on the condition that it would be solely for the Dillon Insurance Agency and that the R80 would be preserved as sort of a buffer between this dissimilar use and it wasn't consistent and still isn't consistent with a comprehensive land use plan for this area which calls for very low density residential so what you have here is a creature that was put in place to allow that sole user. Now, we don't have an issue with rezoning to take away the sole condition of that it is no longer for the Dillon Insurance Agency, but it's going to be for a professional office, that's fine. But the R80 on the property at the back was originally preserved as a buffer to this because it is inconsistent with the comprehensive land use plan. What we have now is them using the LRAO as a tool, a stepping stone, the proverbial camel's nose in the tent, to now get two properties on a property that under uh, R80 and under very low density residential would not have sustained two structures. And so that's what we're here in opposition to is the fact that they're trying to, you know, put another house here and he said, well, you know, that would stop the LRO from moving up Villa Rica Road. Now the comprehensive plan ought to stop you from moving up Villa Rica Road because it calls for something different and nothing stops as is demonstrated by the fact just nine and nine years ago is not a long time in my world. So nine years ago, uh, this was the first piece that broached the Villa Rica Road and its R80 category. The other issue that comes in is because of the configuration of this property, they're going to create a non-conforming lot. If you look at your subdivision ordinance 110-59, it requires your side lot lines to be as close to perpendicular to the road as possible. And as you can see here, they are not. And they are not because you're building it around the original structure that was appropriate for that R80 parcel. You've kept all of the, the building, all of the drives and everything else that was part of that, and you're trying to force an R80 lot into it, and that's not consistent with your own ordinances, and it is creating a lot that does not conform under the subdivision ordinance, which you have to do. So 
to do this is to do a disservice to the comprehensive plan, which calls for this to be very low density residential. It is to do a disservice to the conditions that were negotiated when staff's recommendations previously were ignored in approving a low rise office here in the first place. Like I said, I have no issue with the fact that they want to change out the condition. It's not gonna be the Dillon Insurance Agency, it's gonna be some other professional office. That is at least a, a reasonable limitation on the LRO that already encroaches, but nothing will prevent them, as has been demonstrated, from taking the next house and saying, well, this is LRO and that's LRO, so it would be appropriate to have two offices moving up Villarica Road. You've already broached the sanctity of the R80 and the very low density residential. And for that reason, we would ask that the board not recommend approval of putting a second structure on these properties. This is the smallest R80 parcel on Vic Villa Rica Road. The average size parcel on Villa Rica Road is eight acres. The largest in the immediate area is 20 acres and the smallest is two. This will be the smallest one and it's only being made possible because you've already broached Villarica Road with this LRO, which has a smaller lot requirement. Otherwise, the 2.85 acres would not sustain two structures. And for that reason, we would ask y'all to deny that portion of the application. Thank you. Is there anyone else in opposition? All right, then the public comment portion of the meeting is over. Uh, sadly, this is in District 1, and I, I would like to assign it uh, leadership on this issue to Mr. Anderson because he's done such a great job all morning, but I, I'll, I'll try my best to uh, to move this forward. Let me start with uh, staff. Can you comment on the on the point uh, about sidelines that was made by Mr. Dodrell uh, for me? I know this is something that we didn't discuss at uh, work session. Yeah, and we're taking a look at that right now. And the way that code section reads is it says side lot lines should be at least right angles. So it's not shall, it should. And there's many lots in the county where they're not at 90 degree angles. Turn my microphone on. Let, let me go ahead and, and talk to talk to the issue about whether or not we can get stormwater out here, uh, we, we, whether we can get sewer out here. Um, yeah, Tim Davidson, Cod County Water System. Okay. Thank you, Tim. And. Uh, how will we get sewer uh, out from this property? Well, the I think by, by virtue of there's a proposed split of the lot, and that brings in two rules whether lots are, there, there's an existing structure on septic. So there's rules from the health department as far as whether that can remain on septic, and then there's also water system rules from the county code as far as connecting to sewer. So the existing structure on septic that'd be subject to health department rules as far as the, the new lot size and they would determine that i don't want to speak for them uh, the residential portion the, the the i think it was shown on the site plan as 70 something thousand square feet but the the code is pretty clear on that for subdivided residential lots if they are less than eighty thousand square feet it must be connected to active sewer by gravity you, you have that in your comments already? Is that in staff comments? Uh, I think or? I just referenced the code that, that calls for that, section 122-130. So that's why my recommendation was, well, sewer is, you'd have to zoom out quite a bit. Sewer is over 4,000 feet away to the northeast is where gravity wants to take it. Uh, you now, some people may be okay with running sewer that far there's, there's, there's no code exception for, for that requirement to go to sewer. There's no exceptions for cost, distance, feasibility. It's simply if it's less than 80,000 on a subdivided residential lot, you go to sewer. Um, I, don't know if, I don't know if you can turn the sewer layer on, but it's, it's more than 4,000 feet. Okay, thank you. And so, you, go ahead. I'm sorry, you were making a statement? Yeah, so. Presuming they would not want to spend the money to run 4,000 feet of sewer to serve one lot, 
my recommendation was to adjust the, the split to make that 80,000 square feet. Therefore, it would be exempt from that rule to connect the residential portion to, to active sewer. Now, that may be in conflict with the health department rules as far as keeping the existing structure on septic because enlarging the residential portion shrinks that, that lot. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe it would still be large enough, but I don't want to speak for the health department. They would have to review that proposed lot size of the existing uh, septic lot to determine if, if they could stay on septic or if it would be required to connect to sewer. Okay. Kind of makes sense. Yes. Does, do any of my fellow commissioners have any questions of any of Mr. Davidson or any staff member? Okay. So the, uh, can you just give me the requirement? Uh, again, that would be regarding code section. It's, it's 122 130 uh, addresses new residential subdivisions in the requirement to connect to sewer. I can't remember. Section A3 or uh, A1, maybe. I don't remember that exact, but it's 122 130 that requires for new residential subdivisions, all lots less than 80,000 square feet must connect to active sewer by gravity. All right, let me get uh, let me get Mr. Huff back up here and thank you for your comments. So I, I, I guess the issues we're trying to focus on are uh, connectivity to sewer, whether you could possibly draw the lines differently to get to 80,000 feet and still be in compliance with other requirements that are placed on the LRO. Um, I guess those are the primary issues we're looking to address. Yeah, the, the DGM plan has this lot is 80,000 square feet. We're cognizant of that uh, 80,000 square foot uh, requirement. I've had a discussion with Board of Health, uh, and they seem very comfortable with the potential lot split with uh, the septic being serving both lots, uh, but we would have to go through the full engineering. Uh, and so the, what I think is very uh, Poignant for this board is the fact that we're we will comply with uh, Board of Health in Cobb Water uh, Department requirements in terms of connection to either sanitary sewer or uh, compliance with uh, septic tank regulations. So we we will comply with them. And uh, what we would anticipate is the R80 lot would have a septic tank, and the existing septic tank would serve the LRO uh, on approximately an acre parcel for that piece. So are, are you showing the uh, same lot split line as what we're looking at right yeah. now? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so you disagree with the characterization of the lot as 70,000 square feet? What, there, there was uh, somebody had scaled it. it it's like 79-something. So we will confirm that it is, in fact, right. If, if it's off a, a few feet here or there, it will become it will be 80,000 when platted. Okay. I see the chair is back, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just pass the... the uh, Mr. Huff, if anybody else has questions of the applicant. <laughs> no? Okay. You can have a seat then. I'm, I'm ready to go ahead and make a motion. Uh, I'm, I'm going to make a motion that we hold this till next month just to uh, address these, these issues regarding um, the line and, and whether anything can be done with that and, and to uh, try to get additional comfort regarding the, the sewer versus uh, septic issue. Second. Oh, even though the chair is here, I guess I'll. Are you sitting out? Are you sitting out? Okay, I'll call the question then. Thank you. So by a vote of three to zero, we're holding that. Thank you. Mr. Chair. All right, Mr. Peterson. Okay, next case is rezoning case Z19, Jellen uh, Holdings Incorporated request a rezoning from ZC to NRC for an office retail and restaurant in Landlot 297 of the 18th District. The property is located on the west side of Mapleton Parkway, north of South Gordon Road. Is the applicant present? The director of the afternoon is here. Is there anyone here opposed? Reason case Z19. Two. Three. three. Okay, let the director show there's three people opposed. All those who wish to address the board, please come forward to be sworn in.
Good morning. We're ready. Hi. Yes. My name is Lenicia Cooper. I'm the president of Jaylen Holdings. Um, I've been a resident of Cobb County in Mableton for 25 years. I own a family-owned business for 12 years. The business is currently located in Mableton off Veterans Memorial. Um, I'm looking to relocate my business, and that's hence why I'm here for the application for um, from GC to NRC. Um, my application entails a small retail, small restaurant, and a small office. And um, the relocating of my business um, will hold event um, buses that I'm looking to bring from the outside into the inside and operate my business with the office on this new site um, that I'm applying for. Um, I reviewed the conditions by this staffing department, so I'm not clear on some of the conditions um, regarding no variances, um, a proposed rooftop area, and no parking of, of the event buses that what I currently operate now in Mableton. Um, so for the no variances, um, I, I requested one variance for a setback and that will help with the driveway because the lot is small and getting into the driveway, I needed to bring the um, request a variance for that. Um, and then for um, the rooftop area, I thought that would be a nice add-on to the area as to have a small um, gathering um, for the, whoever occupied the small restaurant um, there that they will have that space. And then, and again, the relocating of my business um, to have the event buses parked there. Mm, I think all of the other conditions I'm fine with that the staff has recommended. Um, for the rooftop area, I'm willing to let that go, but it's imperative that um, that I'm able to relocate my business as part of my business plan um, to have the buses, um, the event buses parked at the new location. That's it. Okay. Anything else? You can, um, if nothing else, you can have a seat. We'll hear from the opposition and we'll call you back up. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We'll hear from the opposition. My name is Robin Meyer, and I co-chair the Zoning Committee for the Mableton Improvement Coalition. Um, we're here today to recommend approval of this application, uh, but with some conditions. We very much appreciate the investment in Mableton uh, by Ms. Cooper and uh, as a Mableton resident and already a local Mableton business. Um, this is, you know, this is exactly the kind of growth we like to see. Um, commercial development is needed in the stretch of Mableton. There's new, re new residential development coming and a dearth of um, modern um, uh, commercial spaces for uh, consumer-facing businesses to locate. Um, the elevations that we've seen are attractive and likely to meet the design guidelines for Mableton Parkway. The, the difficulty here is that this is a very, again, a very small piece of property, about two-thirds of an acre. Uh, sandwiched between a five-lane highway and an existing residential neighborhood. The um, site plan presents a big issue for us in the in the rear of the site plan, where it where it meets the residential neighbors. The there is not a landscape buffer proposed for the um, for that border between this this commercial space and these homes. And the parking, there's, par there's car parking and bus parking in the rear of the property. Um, it's our understanding that there's some operating hours placed upon the businesses in the Strip Shopping Center. We think that is, is fine. Um, but the event buses are likely to be coming and going um, probably pretty late into the night because that's, that's the nature of that business. And this, this would be activity taking place very, very close to these folks' homes. In fact, one of those neighbors is here and will speak right after me. Um, this is the street behind this property, Carriage Lane, and these are two of the homes um, that would be affected by, um, uh, by this, this, pro this uh, development if it's built. Um, 
I found this, this image on Google Maps and was surprised that I could actually see, because I know the lay of the land, I can see where Mableton Parkway is. And inside that red, that red circle, I can actually see an orange barrel from some recent sidewalk construction, some trail construction on, on Mableton Parkway. So if there were between that, between that, that orange barrel and this, these homes is where we're projecting to put this, this development. And as you can see, um, removal of that, that landscaping would, and no buffer, uh, would dramatically affect the value and livability of these homes. So we would suggest the following conditions for this application if, it were, if you were to recommend it for approval, many of these in keeping with the staff recommendation. Um, that there be no variances, that a revised site plan um, without variances be uh, available for the Board of Commissioners before the hearing, and the primary variance that we're aware of has to do with that landscape buffer. That the garages be removed from the site plan, that there be no event bus parking on the site. We understand that that is Ms. Cooper's uh, business plan, um, and we, we wish we could give it a thumbs up. We can give a thumbs up to the retail, de retail development, um, but we're very concerned about the noise and traffic from the buses. Um, that the parking spaces in the rear be moved away from the residential property. Um, that the rooftop area, um, in, in keeping with the staff recommendation, uh, be removed. And that there be um, adherence to the Mableton Parkway design guidelines, which we think will be easy to do, uh, and prohibited uses, which um, we, we don't see um, um, a, an issue with most of these, the, the businesses suggested by Ms. Cooper have certainly fallen um, well outside these uses. So uh, with that, we'd ask you to, uh, to recommend approval um, of the retail um, aspect of this, uh, oper of this development, uh, but not the event bus parking. Thank you. We have, I thought, yeah, next. Next person, come up and speak. Okay, uh, my name is Robert Genchi. Um, when you were showing those two houses in that picture, uh, that is my property there, directly behind, that's my house, okay? I've been living there 36 years. My kids grew up there. My parents actually owned the home before me. I bought it in 1988. And uh, the house to the left is my house. Uh, it used to be a three bedroom, two bath with a full basement. Now it's six bedrooms, four and a half bath, three car garage. I put money into it. It's a very valuable home. We have a beautiful backyard, which is the property that these people want to cut all the trees down and uh, put up a parking lot to coin up a, uh, a song. Um, I'm totally opposed to anything happening on that property. Uh, we have a noise level which is phenomenal. Mableton Parkway, with all the development, that's there's a lot of people going up and down and there is um, you know, like at two or three o'clock in the morning, somebody's zipping by with open exhaust pipes. It's noisy, very noisy. You cut trees out, it's gonna be even more noisy. The only time it's quiet is in the dead of the summer when the leaves are on the trees and then you almost don't see Mableton Parkway. It's beautiful. Um, a restaurant with a a porch, uh, second floor, open, noise, music. Uh, it's gonna devalue my property, and that's what I'm concerned about. I put a lot of money in because I've lived there for a long time. My mama died, my father moved in, my kids were still at Pebble Brook. Now they have their own homes, so they're growing, and we have four grandkids. Um, I put a lot of money into that home. I don't want it devalued because there's no backyard or there's uh, noise in the backyard besides traffic noise. Uh, so I'm, I'm not for anything happening to it. Now they're willing to put a, a strips. I'm not interested in any kind of 
Uh, the original owner that owned the property, at one time, he wanted to develop it. And I said to him, okay, you can buy my property and then you can do whatever you want to do with it. I'll move. But as long as I'm still living there, I don't want anything done to that property. It's too small of a lot for, for any type of commercial business. You almost have to see it for yourself. I don't know if you, any of you have been over to that lot. Matter of fact, it almost looks like it was maybe a Civil War site. There's a ditch that runs across that's not parallel with the road, but slightly angled that uh, resembles uh, a, um, a bunker replace. Uh, I don't know, uh, but you need to see it. Um, we've enjoyed it. We've enjoyed it for 36 years, and uh, I, I just don't enjoy the noise, the traffic noise. And you cut the trees down and put commercial business in there, and then A, it's going to be noisier for me, and uh, so I'm thinking for myself, and, uh, and B, uh, we lose our privacy, uh, and we devalue my property. And uh, those are my concerns. That's all I really have to say. All right. Okay. Thank, thank you. Have you been to that property? Any of you? Yeah. Did you see what I was talking about? That trench that runs through there? Excuse me. No? That deep line is more dry. Mm hmm Okay. Well, thank thank you. you very much for your time. Thank you. Is that all the opposition? Okay. If so, I'm going to turn this over to uh, Commissioner Anderson to lead our discussion. Excellent. Thank you, Chairman Vault. So I'd like to just start off by asking um, the, the Planning Division, Mr. Peterson, um, a, um, just to walk through kind of their analysis on and recommendations around the site, um, and then also uh, to see, uh, you know, perhaps give some context around the development. There was a zoning case that was on a site adjacent here, I think, at some point within the last, I want to say, um, year and a half. Uh, I think that was for a, st a storage facility. And um, so I, I would just be interested to see, um, just as a reminder, what were some of the recommendations around that site for, uh, in terms of buffering for some of the adjacent uses, um, if that's something that can be recalled. So just two questions. One is just current com comments for this site, and then also any um, feedback around buffering from the prior recommendation to the site just northwest, which had come in, um, I want to say, about a year and a half ago, but I might be misremembering. Yes, uh, Commissioner Anderson. The staff recommendation was to approve it with uh, many conditions on it, and the conditions that the staff recommended would help offset the negative uh, aspects of what would happen on the property. Uh, for instance, um, staff did recommend um, no rooftop area. You know, we thought that would contribute to noise and light to the neighbors directly behind it. The staff uh, uh, also recommended the hours be limited to 10 p.m. Uh, in the applicant's uh, information, they indicated it may be uh, open till midnight. So the staff wanted to bring it down to 10 a.m., which is more reasonable. Staff, all, the staff also did recommend no automotive uses and no event uh, parking, no event bus parking on the site. You know, we felt that would be uh, disruptive to the neighbors behind it because they would be coming in pretty late at night and into the morning. Uh, uh, and you know, we're well aware that the that the elected officials uh, have kind of stopped zoning. Uh, any use that's an automotive use on Mapleton Parkway due to the negative effect that it's had on the parkway. So any type of, of used car sales or, or auto repair or tire, tire sales or an auto repair shop have been things that the board's not been approving just to improve the aesthetics of the, the roadway. Uh, we also put in there that there'd be no variances. You know, staff was concerned with the setback variance and with the, the variance to reduce the landscape buffer totally adjacent to the single family houses in the south. Uh, so the staff recommendation was to approve, but with a lot of conditions that would control the use and look of the property. Great, thank, thank you. 
and again, I'm just trying to think about this holistically. So for the site that was adjacent, I think that was um, a zone in KZ59 in 2022 um, for, I think there was a storage facility approved for that or recommended for that. Can, can you remind us of, of any kind of buffering requirements that, um, um, what, what happened with that? With that case, and then well, also any kind they of they would be required to put in their twenty foot landscape buffer, mm -hmm. and there was some talk with the adjacent cell tower parcel that kind of wraps it on the western side. Uh, you know, the, the community was opposed to using that parcel as their buffering, so they are required to put in their required buffering on the Z fifty nine site. Mm -hmm. Can I can I pause for a point of question? Um, the, where on this current map was the Z fifty nine? It, it's directly north where the NRC is. It's the big piece of NRC, John Paul. Yeah, that one right there. Got it. Thank you. Okay. So, so there, there was a, it, just to clarify, a 20-foot buffering requirement for, yes. for that along all the southern edge and the eastern edge of this property? Uh, along the southern edge, where the residential is. Okay. You know, on the, on the eastern edge is the Z19 property. It not, would not be required adj adjacent to another commercial use. Right. Okay. And... The site plan uh, for that has been proposed for Z19. Remind me, what is the buffer that's shown on the south, uh, adjacent to the residential? The, there is no buffer, but it's required to be a 20-foot landscape buffer. Okay. I'm just making sure I have the. Um, and that was a variance request, correct? Yes, it's not shown okay. on the plan at all. Okay. And it looks like the parking lot comes right up to the edge of the property line. Okay. So in, in effect, the, remove, the inclusion of a buffer um, would pretty much alter entirely. Um, I'm trying to understand, do we have, can we bring the site plan up again uh, on, the, on the screen? I don't know if the applicant has shown the site plan. It, it's it's within, the, um, within the actual staff analysis package. Just wanted to make sure, see if we could can bring the site plan up. All right. So as of now, there, if there were a 20 foot buffer to be included, uh, does not, um, just kind of eyeballing this, that does start to um, eat into the parking. Just looking at where the setback lines are on this, um, it looks like from the lot line, there's like a 35 foot distance towards the lowest point of the building. Um, and so I'm just assuming a 20 foot buffer along that entire southern strip would start to eat up some portion of that area that's labeled proposed underground detention. Yes. And um, that whole impervious surface that's along the southern edge. So then, it, Comes even more constrained because that's not usable space anymore. That's right. Okay. Um, and that ultimately probably renders impractical the parking of the event buses because then you have limited circulation, if I'm looking at this correctly, or makes it a little bit tenuous. But that's not what we're, we're not doing a site engineering process here. Um, okay. So I, I, I mean, the reason I ask this is because I think there has to be a buffer. Right? You know, I, I think there, there is kind of a version of this where I think it's based on the feedback I've heard from the community. This is a really could be really exciting use and um, bring something that's well maintained and brings you know retail to the location. And I, and I think there's a, a version of this that can really activate it, but it probably has to be a version that includes some version, some some concept of a buffer along that southern edge. Um, that I think would be at least a minimum of 20 feet. That has a ripple effect of kind of forcing you to adjust the placement of the site, um, particularly the parking area. So I would just point that out as something where my head is going and, and, and probably just as a, as a next step for something to consider it should we you know, work to update this site plan, having a 20 foot buffer along that southern edge. Um, do my commission, uh, fellow commissioners have any questions of, of planning staff? Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Lindstrom. Um, how is uh, 
let's say this is approved as is. How would that affect the storm water coming down in th into the residences? It looks like there's some um, elevation change. And uh, yep. storm wa is storm water here? Hello, Andrew Heath, Copy Stormwater Management. And uh, I guess to your further to your question, uh, that was one of our comments um, on the site. Um, the site is somewhat inconveniently situated where there's a kind of a valley right through the middle of the site that carries runoff water from, um, I believe it's South Gordon Road on the east side. I'm trying to remember the road name, the smaller road to the south. There's a pipe that comes under that road and um, then just rainfall that falls on the property flows across this property off to the tw to the northwest so there's i i haven't identified it that would be the responsibility of frank gibson and erosion control but just looking at it and the amount of drainage area i wouldn't suspect that it's considered to be a buffered stream mm -hmm. so it could be built over there but a path or a pipe system culvert of some sort to convey that runoff across the site is going to be necessary because that pipe is going to have to go pretty much right through the middle of about where that proposed uh, five bay garage is. And so my recommendation in looking at that, naturally we wouldn't want to permit the pipe under the building. Uh, that wouldn't be good for future access to the pipe and um, it, it would be a hindrance in the future for maintenance of the pipe and maybe endanger the building as well. So in my comments, um, if someone came in and this were not being rezoned, what I would recommend they do is break that garage up and maybe have two bays on one side and three bays on the other to create a gap between there where the pipe can go between the buildings mm -hmm. and then you don't have a building over the pipe. Mm -hmm. um, but that would make, if, if the site plan is configured the way it is, some of that garage building, if it is split like that, is gonna have to be slid further to the, I guess you would call that the rear of the parcel and extend a little bit further to that, to the rear side. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. Also, um, any pipe system, whether it was here or anywhere else, when the water enters the pipe, it would be entering it from that south side, southeast side and flowing toward the northwest. And where the water comes out the northwest side of the pipe, it's um, just a traditional, um, minimum requirement that there be a, uh, a pad of stone there they refer to as riprap to dissipate that pipe, yeah. the water's energy. And so there's a minimum length that's required for that. And where the back of the garage building is, is probably closer to the property line than the minimum length of that pad. So that's another reason for cutting out a little area in between the buildings and just separating the buildings so that that area where the pipe is, where the riprap pad needs to be, can just be separate from the buildings and not interfere with the buildings. But it would result in that building getting slid back if that, if that option were chosen. All right, thank you. Okay. Any further questions for Stonewater? No. I'll turn it back to you, Commissioner Anderson. And then, um, can I have DOT? Uh, Good morning, Ligia Florim, DOT. Great. Good morning, Ligia. Good morning. So, um, just um, from. You know, obviously, there, there's some discussion we've been having about the different te um, potential changes to the site plan, but um, I, I would just be curious, the site plan as shown, assuming that could work, does, does that, um, are there any issues you see in terms of circulation uh, and with, within this, given some of the event buses, and, and uh, can you talk a little bit about that and if, if any of that was highlighted in the comments? Sure, we did not highlight anything inside of the property for the circulation of the buses. However, uh, adjacent to May Bolton Parkway, we re rec recommend an improved radius or a taper or a deceleration lane. 
and it also will have to go through the Georgia Department of Transportation for their approval since it's a state route. Uh, so we were concentrated on the right of way issue, but uh, the radius had to accommodate the, the buses coming in and out. Okay, got it. And so this does, I'm looking at the site plan, I don't see any, any taper as shown. Um, Correct, the one on the, yes, right, so that's exactly. the recommendation. Yes. Okay, would be to cut, they'd have to add a taper on this, which um, would thereby further impact the setbacks. Correct, and that's okay. up to D, G dot to approve as well. Right. Okay, all right, yeah, I just wanted to clarify. Um, so that effectively means, um, if I'm looking at these setbacks, uh, right. it would have to shift the building even further. Correct, um, and we're, we're also concerned west. with, we made the comment about the uninterrupted access from the uh, right away. So we require a minimum of 50 foot, but G dot might require 100, which that would put you at the end of the, of the site because it's so small. Okay, got it. Well, thank you. Any other questions from my fellow commissioners on of DOT? Thank Great. you. Thank you. So, uh, so uh, uh, I just want to have the app. Can the applicant come up for just one moment for me as well, please? Thank, thank you for your patience and, and talking with everybody oh, within no and, and the staff comments. And I know it can feel overwhelming with a lot of the different kind of terminology and everything brought in, but um, I, I just wanted to summarize and see if, if, if you felt like there was a path forward for some of the comments here really relating to buffering. Um, it just based on some of the feedback that you know, staff has been providing and, mm -hmm. and some of the comments from the fellow commissioners, there's probably going to be a, a need to rework a site plan and one that does show an, if, 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 if it can work um, a appropriate buffer of at least 20 mm -hmm. feet along the side, uh, some degree of, of taper, um, which would um, obviously um, impact where the buildings are placed right now, mm -hmm. uh, and stormwater. Um, there are some you know, just challenges you want to get ahead of, um, mm -hmm. which you know, if you connect dots, might require eliminating um, some of these, some of the parking that's along the rear, and and I just wanted to uh, just make sure that, and, and obviously you can talk with staff after this, but conceptually, you'd say to before that it was kind of a little bit of a non-starter for the parking not to be available here for the vent parking. Sure. Are, are there, have you, have you, are there any brokers or folks that you've engaged that might be able to help find some offsite parking for those that, um, if, if that was something that was kind of carved out of the use here? So to answer your question, I've been working with the, um, your first couple questions, I've been working with the surveyor about um, looking at the buffering. I've been um, speaking with uh, an engineer about this, um, the runoff and the, um, the water and in addition, um, an, another layout for the building, um, for the parking to allevi alleviate the parking in the back. Um, however, um, the purpose of this was to relocate my business. Yeah. That includes the parking of the vehicles. Um, I um, spoke to the community that I'm willing to do anything to make it you know, not look, you know, it won't be no automotive use, no, it won't be repairs, it's just mainly storage. Um, the vehicles, they're not loud at all. I mean, they, they, I mean, it's like a car and you go on in, go on in and open up your garage when you come in home in the, at night. Um, they do come in late nights, early mornings, um, but at the noise level, I don't think the noise level will be there. So as far as the broker that you're asking, um, that I would have to not move along with the plan if I'm not allowed to really relocate totally the operations of my business at this location. Okay. Yeah, and I understand that, and um, and and all the comments here are just really try to. This is not the site plan that can be approved right now. Really, it's it, there's some edits to it, and, and that those will probably realistically 
kind of imp imp impair, I think, uh, uh, potentially, unless they're, I mean, I'm not a site engineer, and, uh, but they might impair some of the ability to kind of have some of that additional parking. But I just say that as a, a you know, the next step usually with this is to provide a, a bit of a more formal exercise around that has like a stipulation letter mm. is one element of it. Uh, the second element though is um, ultimately kind of taking some of the feedback and reworking a, a site plan. And if that's just absolutely not possible, where you can re relocate those uh, vehicles either onto a different site or, or maybe have much reduced parking for event buses, maybe not all of them. I also respect and understand that too mm -hmm. from your end. But so re reduced parking meaning as because the buses will be parked in, inside the garage, so they won't be visible, and Mableton Parkway, so the buses won't be visible from the street, and, and as far as the neighbors, um, me and the designer, we were trying to figure out you know, how to make it so that it won't be so intrusive um, to their backyard. Um, so when you say less parking for the buses, um, I'm open to that, but I need the, the, some parking of the buses to be there. Okay. Can I add, uh, so to, just talk to me about the buses for a minute. How many buses are you parking? I know it's five bays on here. Mm -hmm. So are there five mm -hmm. vehicles? Mm -hmm. So it, it's seven and two of them are like 12 feet and they'd be double stacked in the garage. Okay, got it. And then you said the hours, you said the buses will come in late in the early morning. What are the typical? hours of operation mm -hmm. or, or so early morning they typically come in about 2 3 a.m in the morning um, that would be the latest um, that they will be entering thank you yeah. commissioner uh, yes. uh, so when you say the, this is going they're going to be double stacked is this like an elevator system for cars like oh. they have in New York or oh no one would be parked in front of the other like one and then you know one bus and then a bus parked behind it okay okay yeah. yeah and is this a metal building that you would be building for the garage no no um we still um, finalizing the design, it will be um, either um, brick or plank. Plank. Um, I don't have the elevation, but it will be brick and um, and hardy plank. I think hardy plank. It, it would be nice, and I say this only because I have something similar be, behind where I live, um, and it's made quite a difference. If you could, uh, it's going to be visible for the neighbor, um, it'll be visible for 30, 30 feet. But if you paint that garage door, that's what he's gonna be looking at. And if you can paint them an earth color, you'll be surprised how helpful that is to the neighbor. That's just a thought. No, absolutely. So it would be an earth tone color and it would be a design feature. You wouldn't really know that it's an actual garage door there. Mm -hmm. I want it to look really, really um, pleasing to the, com you know, the community and to the restaurant and the retail that's going to be there so that it wouldn't be like it's a garage, you know, like a garage of automotives that's parked yeah. there. Okay. So, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. And I, I, let me answer one other question about, so that's the, that's the bus business, the restaurant. So you've heard the concern about the rooftop. What's the square footage of the restaurant just without the rooftop, like the square footage of the restaurant? Um, sure, I think the square, it's, it's a small, it will be a small, a small restaurant, like a to-go um, takeout. And let's see, I have it there. I think it's going to be like 980 square feet. Let me see. I'm looking. And as far as the rooftop, the rooftop would have been the same size of, of the restaurant. Thank you. For the Thank you.
thank, thank you for um, answering all our questions here. So no problem. I don't, I don't think we have any more. I'm prepared to make a motion as well. Okay. And, and you, can, you can have a seat if you'd okay. like as well. Thank you. But um, my, my, uh, so in light of this, I think my, my motion would be to, to, to hold this application. Um, and one, I think they're um, based on some of the feedback that Commissioner Hughes has shared and, and some of the, the outreach that the applicant has done with the community. It's, um, um, it seems like it's a, it's a welcome use in terms of the retail component, um, but there are probably, you know, have to be understanding of the, the and, I, and I don't know, if, is there a version of this that works to, you know, be cognizant of the neighbor concerns um, and any impacts on their value? Uh, there might not be, um, but um, but given that the entire site, um, based on stormwater comments, based on DOT comment, and based on precedent by the adjoining uh, rezoning, I think it requires a large rework of the site plan. Uh, I, I think I'd be open to having a, a revised version of this site plan, which I heavily anticipate will be meaningfully less intense um, with, a pro with some degree of buffering. That may not, may or may not work still, but um, I think just in light of the desire to have some, uh, a use like this and a, and a resident within the community um, uh, be supported as well, you know, at least have an opportunity for that to be brought forward again would be my recommendation. So. I would recommend holding this for another 30 days with guidance to the applicant to um, prepare a revised site plan and stipulation letter that in does include a bu buffer to the south of at least 20 feet um, and to meet with stormwater just to understand how, what kind of building placement placements uh, they'd have to recognize as part of um, the, uh, any kind of additional site plan and um, preference for a site plan to at least show um, a taper uh, uh, on the right of way, um, since that's really more of a, of a safety issue. So that would be my recommendation, my motion. Thank you, do I have a second? Second. Second from Commissioner Baloney. Any discussion? If not, let's call the question. Vote of four to zero to hold uh, Z19 um, for 30 days. Thank you. Okay, next case is uh, land use permit number 10, Orlando Lopez. Request a temporary land use permit to allow more vehicles and adults the Nakoda allows in Landlot 492 of the 19th District. The property is located on the west side of uh, Hillborough Circle, west of Bank Stone Drive. Is the applicant present? Yes. The director of the applicant is here. Is there anyone here opposed to LUP 10? Let the record show there's no one opposed. Would the applicant please come forward to be sworn in? I'm Orlando Lopez. Good morning. Go ahead. You can start. Good morning. Um, we were cited for a couple of things, and we have taken care of everything. Uh, for example, the outside storage that was taken care of. Um, we emptied a trailer that was there and moved it to pavers um, that were recently installed um, adjacent to the driveway as per the inspector's instructions. And um, the cars, uh, we were cited for having too many cars, so we moved one car out to the street, and there's only three cars on the driveway now. And as far as the, it being a single dwelling uh, for, a single family dwelling, we are a single family. We, as the two of us, plus our daughter, our grown daughter, she does have her fiance 
that has moved in with her as they're in uh, the process of getting their own place, which is trying to be helpful and allow them time to um, work it all out, but they're in the process of doing that. Okay, anything else you wanna share? No, the square footage is, is just um, over by 100 square feet. Uh, it's just a three bedroom, two bath, but it's as simple as she expressed. Okay, um, well, just hold, hang tight there. I will, um, this is in district four, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave the discussion on this one. Um, let me just get, um, if you'll stay there, let me just ask staff um, for Mr. Peterson, uh, what was staff recommendation for um, this particular land use permit? The staff recommendation was to deny the land use permit. And was that based on the square footage in the code? It, it was based uh, primarily on the code enforcement complaint that they had, but you know, they're just barely 100 feet away from being able to have the fourth person, fourth car. Right, and we don't have, I don't see code enforcement. Do we have code enforcement today? No, we don't. And when was, now let me come back to you, Stephka, when was the date of your, of that last citation that got you here? Sorry, I didn't bring my glasses. No, that's okay, take your time. <laughs> the citation was on uh, the 20th of December of 2023. Okay. And since December 20th, I know, I know you said it in your presentation, but could you go back through all the steps you've done since December 20th to rectify what was in the citation? Certainly. The first uh, violation um, listed here is the uh, limitations of outside storage. And we were cited for having, oh, it says that only firewood and loan furnishings are allowed to be stored outside, remove all other items, which we did. We removed everything. There's nothing, and I have pictures on my cell phone taken this morning that I can show the court if um, if it's needed. And that was a utility trailer, is what it is. And so is it still on the property? The utility trailer had some materials in it. Is it still on the property, and the I, utility trailer? It's It has a parking space, but it's not currently there. Okay. We, those are the, the pavers that we added onto the driveway, which is attached. We've added the pavers so that I, when it does come back, I don't know when, but it can park there. So let's talk about that for a second. So you do plan on it coming back to the property? Yes. And when is that? Not sure my son's uh, borrowing it right now. He's okay. gonna be doing some things in his home. And, and so, so what? I'd, say, I'd say within the next 60 days it should be back. Okay, and it's a fully enclosed container or is it open? I'm no, just trying to get- it's open. Yeah, it's a two wheel container that you okay. um, tow. And that, and so you were cited because you had stuff on top of it or because it was Inside. there? Inside. It was just, it was shot on the grass. It was on the grass and it had some the material, material or building the building material in it. Okay. So the cart was on the grass and now you've put the papers in since December. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Okay. Give me one second. So I want to go back to staff and uh, Mr. Peterson. So you have to help me out without code enforcement here with the pavers that they've put in, can the storage be parked on the pavers and does that count against their allotted vehicles? I know it's just a two, it's not a full vehicle, but I'm well, just the, trying to get an understanding. Well, the vehicles have to, you know, there's a maximum of uh, three vehicles allowed on the site based on the size of the house. Correct. You know, if they met the, the size guidelines, they would be able to have four outside, but the house is about 104 square feet shy of meeting that. Yep. So they can have three outside max. I, I guess my question, I don't want to put um, the Lopez in a position where I recommend approval, just given that 104 square feet difference, but then that they get cited again based on the type of vehicle that they'll have. So I'm trying to avoid. If, if they're parked on pavers, then that would qualify as a hard treated surface. Okay, that's what I, thank you. Um, okay, I'm sorry I interrupted you. So now could you tell me everything else? So you did the papers, the yes, vehicle sir. is gone, and then what else have you done? And, and the other thing that um, we were told is that we uh, needed to follow parking standards and that all vehicles must be parked on a hardened surface. So we did that. We put the papers down adjacent to the driveway, and we've removed one of the vehicles, being that there's four adults in the house. We all need to get to work and whatnot. So there's four vehicles, and one of them was, we were trying to be polite to everybody because it's a tight um, street, so we didn't want to block anybody coming in or out of that street. So we had it 
um, we had all two vehicles on the grass and two vehicles under driveway. And when we were sighted, we, we were told you can't do that. So we put the third vehicle under driveway and the fourth vehicle on the street, making sure that it doesn't block any other people's driveways to um, their houses to come in and out. We're very aware of that. So um, we've taken those measures and have, have you heard there's no more than three on the driveway at any point in time. And when the fourth one comes in, he parks on the, on the street. Right. Have you heard from any of your neighbors regarding the parking? Or? We never have. Okay. No. Okay. First news was when we were cited that day. So. Okay. We've, uh, we've also sent them letters to the two neighbors indicating this zoning. Okay. Thank you. For instructions. Okay. And then the third item was a uh, single family dwelling, which um, fortunately and unfortunately or unfortunately, our daughter has requested that we allow her to move in with her fiance until they figure their own situation and find their own place. And that's a good thing given that she wants to spend time with us but obviously there's one extra person that's not related he will be soon they're getting married soon so he has family and they will be moving out within maybe six months for sure okay and uh, did, um not to get to all the wedding details but uh, do they plan to get married within the six months do you know no okay got it um so he'd still be unrelated until he moves. That's correct. Okay, just just trying to get timelines and things correct. Um, okay, still stay right there. Let me open it up and make and see if any of the other commissioners have any questions. Okay, um, you can have a seat. Thank, thank you for you so coming today and thank you for the information. This time I'm prepared to uh, make a recommendation. Um, my motion is that. Um, we uh, recommend approval of this land use permit for 12 months um, with the conditions that um, everything done to uh, mitigate the citation be kept up and that zone enforcement goes back to revisit the property um, to provide update on the property's condition. Um, and again, that it's only for 12 months so that uh, hopefully, it, uh, what I've heard from the Lopez is that this seems that this will be rectified. Um, part of my reasoning for recommending approval is the 104 square foot difference between that they would be able to have a, another car. Uh, the fact that the unrelated individual is soon to be part of the family. And so I'm hoping within that 12 month land use permit, many of these things will be uh, eliminated and that code enforcement could um, keep us abreast if something changes. So that's my recommendation. Second. Yeah. I would love to move it to consent, yes. Um, do I have any, uh, I have a second from um, Commissioner Anderson, I mean, Commissioner Boulogne, but is there any discussion? If not, let's call the question. So a vote of four to zero to uh, recommend approval of LUP 10 for uh, a period of 12 months. Thank you. Next case is LUP 12, uh, Reginald A. Rutherford. I request, I request a temporary land use permit to allow a business and related vehicle parking in land lots 1244 1245, 1272, 1273, and 1319 of the 19th District. The property is located on the south side of High uh, Lithia Springs Road, east of Holloman Road. Is the applicant present? The director of the applicant is here. Is there anyone here opposed to LUP 12? None. The director shows there's no one opposed. Would the applicant please come forward to be sworn in? Good, mo good morning, Mr. Chairman and uh, commissioners. My name is Reginald Rutherford. That's my wife, Carla Rutherford. Uh, I've, 
I'm the owner and president of Indigo uh, LLC in Powder Springs. Um, I've been a resident of Cobb County uh, for over 30 years and a resident of Powder Springs uh, for over 20 years. Um, we have a landscape uh, tree service company and uh, we purchased the property um, in 2021, I believe it was, uh, with the intention uh, to um, uh, a 40 acre property with the intention to store, um, uh, have ample space to store our vehicles there, uh, landscape vehicles and, and equipment. Um, so I'm requesting uh, this morning that the board uh, consider uh, a temporary land use permit uh, for such. Uh, within um, a very small radius of uh, the address in which we're located uh, are other small businesses on Hiram Lithia Springs Road uh, to include uh, a HVAC company this probably about a quarter mile uh, down the road. Uh, our vehicles where they are stored uh, are a bit off the roadway. Um, it's not really visible from the main road, Hiram Lithia Springs. Uh, so uh, again, I'm requesting that uh, the board consider granting us a temporary land use permit. Uh, there's a small house on the property. Uh, where my wife and I live. Um, and uh, you'll see there, uh, um, we got a, had a lot split done on the property uh, with future intentions uh, to build uh, uh, new residents um, off in the open pasture. Okay, that's, that's all you would need to say. I have some questions, but I, I wanna make sure I don't interrupt your time. <laughs> Right. Yes, sir. That, that's it. All right. This is uh, also in District 4, so I'll, I'll, I'll lead the discussion on this. Can you, um, based on the, what's on the screen, um, can you show me where, because from what I've studied about the case, you, you plan on parking uh, quite a bit of equipment. It's eight, eight, I mean, eight different pieces of equipment or vehicles. Is that correct? And if you can show me where they would be parked. I mean, it's a big piece of little property, so I'm just trying to get a better sense of where you plan on parking the vehicles. Just describe it. <clears throat> uh, just describe it if you can. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yes, um, where the, uh, there are two drives uh, that um, um, access the property. Uh, the drive to the left of the um, small white house in which we live um, I'm, I'm sorry, to drive to the right, uh, that goes back to the barn. Uh, and there's a little utility shed uh, before you get to the barn, um, uh, and a gate and a gate there, right, right off in there uh, to my left is uh, the area in which the uh, vehicles will be stored. And then, okay, thank you. That's that's helpful. So it's off of the. So it's closer to Keaton Lane, then. With the, I don't see any <clears throat> landscape <clears throat> buffers there. So the house that's in, in orange right across from Keaton Lane. Are you saying where I'm, you, can you see where I'm talking about this house over to the left in orange, in the orange box? Uh-huh. Across the street from Keaton Lane. Correct. To the left, a little bit more. Right. Yep. Yeah. This one, do they, <clears throat> are, is that house, look, would that house be looking at the parking then based on what you said? Would they be looking at the equipment? Uh, yeah, it's visible. Um, and where the vehicles are actually parked is not close to Keaton Lane there. It's, it's further over to my right. Uh, if you go on up toward the, toward the top and over to the left. Yes, on back right, right. 
So it'd be there, but but visible from Keaton Lane, invisible. Uh, from yeah, there. you can still see it. Okay. Oh, from here. And then let's talk about the materials. So you plan on parking that on gravel? Or are you paving that? Like, what do you plan on putting the equipment on? Uh, I'm sorry. Repeat that. Yeah. Um, so you showed me where uh, it's going to go, but what do you plan on parking the vehicles on? Is that gravel? Are you paving? It's, it's, it's gravel. It's, it's already existing uh, uh, solid uh, um, area of gravel that, okay. that's, uh, that's there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then let's go back to the citation. I guess that's what brought you here to ha even have to come. What were you cited for from code enforcement? Um, the the initial citation, well, it was it was a result of I think something happened with my neighbor uh, uh, for some reason, and I don't even know all the details of that. Uh, I think they were cited, and uh, and then um, uh, I think they mentioned to the office to the code enforcement officer perhaps that uh, well, <laughs> what about? Uh, these trucks uh, that are that are parked here. Then, so that's uh, so I was cited for um, for the vehicles, um, commercial vehicles uh, being parked there. Yeah. Um, and do you know which neighbor? I, I'm just asking. <laughs> It's, not, it, it's, not to put you against your neighbor. I'm trying to figure out the impact yeah, on this yeah. neighbor on Keaton who would be looking at these vehicles is yeah. really what I'm trying to yeah. ascertain. Yeah, um, speculation, but I, I hadn't approached any neighbor yeah. about it. Uh, actually, and that's fair. Great, great relationship with all my neighbors. And that's fair. I, yeah. I won't put you on the spot for that. Yeah. I just want yeah. to yeah. know. But I, I can share with you. I don't mind doing that. Uh, so... Um, if you go uh, um, back up to that area where I said uh, we're parking at, and uh, right when, and where the line goes across the property line there, there's a fence in that house, uh, that house uh, there. Mm -hmm. So that's what suspect. Uh, okay. okay. And let me ask a question about that house. So there's a fence there uh, mm -hmm. that you said. So can that? Mm -hmm. From their property, are they able? Mm -hmm. I, I just don't see the elevations as we're looking at this here. Are they able to see the parking of the vehicles from that particular house as well? I'll say that one more time. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, the house that you just pointed to, are they able to see the parking based on where you have your proposed parking? Are they able to see the vehicles as well? Um, they can see it if they come out uh, kind of to the front. Um, uh, yeah, right in there by Keaton, right there. They can come around and, and, and see it, see the vehicles. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and, and then one further question, then I'm going to open it up and see if my other commissioners have questions. This is a big, a big lot, uh, a big property. Have you considered other uh, locations on the lot to park the vehicles? Or is this the only where you're saying the gravel where you showed us today? Is that the only location you've considered? Yeah, that um, that's the most uh, viable location for us, considering security, um, accessibility. Um, I mean, of course, yeah, we're on a 40-acre property. Um, um, I had some discussion with uh, my wife and I surrounding that. Um, but that is the most ideal uh, location uh, uh, to park our vehicles there. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, just hang tight. Any uh, other questions from the other commissioners? Yeah, uh, Commissioner Lindstrom. And here I didn't think I'd be saying a word all day today. <laughs> what is that stuff? That's near the trucks. What what is, is what now? Or is that a rock formation? Is that what, what, what is, is that stuff? Oh, they're logs. Oh, those are those are those are. Oh, it's not logs. Uh, some of that is is logs. It's looking like. To me, there's nothing. That's probably an old, uh, older picture. There's nothing there, no logs or anything. Now, now we have had some logs uh, 
there before. That's what that is. Uh, we have had logs there before, and um, um, we cleaned all of that up. Mm-hmm. Yes. So that they're not there now. No, 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 no. Nothing but the vehicles. Well, um, how, how many trucks did you say you have? About eight. Ten, yes, ma'am. Yeah. That's correct. Do you park them any which way, like they appear here, or do you line them up? Neatly? Oh, they are lined up at all times. And I, I'm assuming they kind of disappear. They go off to jobs. Come 7 a.m., they're off or whatever. Yes, ma'am, that's okay. correct. All right, yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Commissioner Anderson. Um, thank you for the detail on the, on the site. I think in, in the submission you had said you, you actually got a variance for this, right? The, um, if I'm correct, back in 2021 to allow for parking and maneuvering on gravel, yeah. is, that, is that correct? The, yes. Okay. And so what, what, can you remind me, and sorry, this is, you know, sometimes there's a lot of a, pieces of the analysis here, but yeah. what, what did that variance permit you to do? What did it? That, was it to allow for, um, oh. like, oh. the existing parking of the vehicles um, on the site, um, yeah. or was this for something different? Um, I was just trying to see if it, if yeah, it the, the variance was for, um, I was told that um, I would need to, um, and this was um, during the process of trying to uh, um, get my lot split approved mm -hmm. and uh, uh, f to build our new home. And um, it came back that um, they were wanting me to uh, concrete the entire drive uh, and also uh, with the barn being there. Um, so my argument was that um, this has been here since the 60s, uh, including the barn and the own, previous owners, that um, property owner that we purchased a house from, um, uh, they, uh, they had a small business as well, uh, uh, a commercial electrical company. And uh, so, so the variance was for, was for the drive, again, we have two drives and, uh, that, that goes around the house and, and uh, um, that's, uh, those drives are gravel. And um, so it came back uh, what the county um, uh, approved it for with uh, stipulations that I uh, have a concrete apron in installed off, okay. off of Hiram Lithia Springs Road. Okay. And, and was it the same level of, um, I guess, truck traffic and volume at that time? Like the, 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 the trucks that currently, that you mentioned, are kind of coming back and forth on this site. Was there any, was this basically the same kind of business as usual in 2021? Like I'm trying to just say, figure out if it was some, something where the, the trucks kind of came in subsequent years. Mm -hmm. and, but before that, when this variance was approved, it was largely lighter vehicles. Uh, was there any big change over the last couple of years, basically, is the well, question. I'm sorry, I wear hearing aids, so it's oh, not oh, you, it's, oh, it's not, me. I, can, okay. I can speak loud, I speak kind of soft sometimes. Yeah. So. yeah, he's asking if there was any change, any significant change between 2021 and now. Were those oh. the same vehicles at that? Oh, oh, same vehicles, No. yeah, no significant change. Okay. Yes. Great, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, just hold tight and uh, Mr. Um, Peterson, can you um, remind us what the staff recommendation is for this land use permit? The staff rec, uh, the staff rec was to deny the application. Okay. And is that just based on the intensity of? It, it's what based on the intensity of the use. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other further questions on this? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I did not uh, hear what uh, Mr. Peters said. Yeah, I'm happy to repeat it. So I was asking him what was the staff's recommendation for this particular uh, case, and it was uh, to deny it was the staff recommendation. So I was just getting an update on that. Uh, and based on, and it, that was based on the intensity of the use of the property, based on the eight vehicles. Um, Okay, uh, with no further questions, you, you guys can go ahead and have a seat. Thank you for sharing today. 
Um, this is a tough one. Uh, I did talk to uh, Commissioner Hughes about this one uh, in preparation for today. The, um, the dilemma is, I mean, it's a huge piece of property. It's over 40 acres, so you would think that this could be accommodated, but I do have some concerns about the parking being off of Keaton and so close to two to neighbors uh, with eight. Um, with that, I, I, I think I'm, it's, it's probably not the best, my best recommendation today, but I, I, I think I want to hold this um, because um, Commissioner Hughes had some, had some concerns and wanted to see if there were some other options. I kind of asked that in my questioning, but uh, just not sure. It seems that based on the applicant's answer that it's the, the most viable is the parking that they suggest. But I do think it, um, it'd be prudent to revisit this given the size of this lot. Uh, and so I, my motion is that we hold this for it for 30 days and allow uh, both uh, Commissioner Hughes and um, Commissioner Sheffield to, to have some further conversations about it. So that's my motion. Second. I have a second from uh, Commissioner Anderson. Uh, any discussion? If not, let's call the question. Okay, by a vote of four to zero, we recommend holding uh, LUP 12 um, for further discussion and evaluation. Thank you. Okay, next item is SLUP 2 of 2024, uh, the estate of James W. Bentley, owner Lynn Bentley Taylor, Bentley Commercial Properties LLC. Summer Hour Properties, LLLP, uh, the estate of James W. Bentley, owner Justin uh, Ottinger, um, request a special land use permit for grinding, reduction of materials, and a sawmill in land lots 1096 and, 10, and 1137 of the 16th District. The property is located on the north side of Gresham Road, east of Fairview Drive. The applicant is present. Is there anyone here opposed to SLUP2? Let the record say there's no one opposed. Would you have me please come forward to be sworn in? Hey, good morning. Hey, good morning. My name is George Bentley and I am uh, representing the owners for this piece of property. Um, this is, I'm gonna give the first three minutes to uh, Kevin Blonde, he's passing information out. This piece of property, I'll, I'll let him tell you about the usage, then I'll describe what's going on here. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for your time. My name is Kevin Blonde. I am the Director of Operations for T2 Group parent company of top tier trees, top tier green waste, and top tier stump grinding. I'm also a 30 year resident of Cobb County myself, and I'm raising my family in East Cobb. Our vision for 1471 Gresham Road is an arboricultural epicenter for East Cobb and Cobb County alike. Our sustainable approach to Cobb County serves these goals. It is conservative to estimate over 250,000 of Cobb County's trees are being cut down on an annual basis. These trees are inefficiently processed and then shipped outside of Cobb. Our county deserves a more ecologically friendly and community-focused solution to keeping local wood local. T2 Group's goal, in partnership with the industry and community leaders, is to do just that. We envision 1471 Gresham Road as an arboricultural epicenter that mitigates the industry's formidable carbon footprint and waste of valuable natural resources. What if there was an all-encompassing solution to the problems of what do I do with all the logs, tree debris, wood chips, and recyclable material that is current and expense and is usually treated as refuse as opposed to being recycled or repurposed? What if this concept was in an ideal location and operated with Cobb County's future and best interest in mind? Our wood reutilization and recycling program is vertical integration. And what that looks like in partnership with North Georgia Timber is a recovery of logs for a log yard, 
and wood chip recycling center being used for boiler plant fuel and local energy plants. Chips are shipped to those energy plants currently, and we are also intending on using the logs as being sold to industry like paper, lumber, etc., furniture making, so on. Those natural resources can also be committed to the community. Impacts with the Garden School, J.J. Daniel Middle School, Nicholson Elementary alike, we do grounds cleanups and use those for common areas. And locally sourced lumber and firewood, sawmill and seasoned firewood to be delivered wholesale or direct to consumers. Again, keeping local wood local. Minimal equipment and heavy machinery is required as our operation is redundant and overlapping on site. Less noise, less trucks, less diesel being burned, more efficient. And lastly, air curtain burner is the future. We generate millions of tons of biomass every year but recycle only 29%. What remains is either burned or hauled to landfills. Air burners revolutionize biomass waste disposal with Firebox, the most cost efficient, environmentally friendly to get rid of wood waste. The air curtain pollution control technology burns 40 times faster than open burning while trapping and significantly reducing particulate matter like black carbon by 98%. I want to say that again, 98% black carbon emission particulate reduction. After burn, the only thing that remains is 2% biochar, which is a nutrient-rich carbon ash that you mix with soil or cell to farmers and agricultural use. The diesel power machine uses less than three gallons of fuel per hour and accepts whole trees, slash piles, logs, root balls, vines, and wooden crates. Lastly, when in operating of the site, our commitment to safety is highlighted by two awards as North America's most safe tree company by Ancoba Insurance and our 2023 Commercial Arboricultural Safety Award from the Georgia Arborist Association. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, as you, you can see, this property was prior to what we've done to it. It was a auto salvage recycling operation and it we crushed, they crushed cars there where we didn't feel it was attractive or environmentally friendly. So. Uh, and, and as you can see, uh, he had encroached on part of our farm by getting cars outside of the boundary of this property. I have since, if you look at your pictures, I've, you, you should see a picture of what it looked like before and what it looks like now. I've reclaimed that area back to the farm and we put it all back in, in really nice shape. Uh, we got a, a, a SLUP 17 in, tw in November of 2022. Uh, we request to retain that SLUP 17. Neither, these will not operate in the same. We, we would like to keep that one and approve this one. Neither one of them will operate at the same time. Only one or the other will operate. Um, this is approximately 6.897 acres. And um, uh, obviously, like you said, it's gonna be used for grinding and screening clean wood waste, air curtains, incineration of yard waste, and permanent installation of a sawmill. Um, we have a, currently there's a special land use permit for vehicle crushing, recycling, used vehicle part sales, general use on mobile sales. And we wanna create an area that's more environmentally friendly than the automobile salvage operation that was currently operating there. Uh, we intend to comply with the comments and recommendations of the Cobb County Department of Transportation and the Fire Marshal's Office, both of those uh, with the understanding that those recommend recommendations would take effect upon redevelopment, where redevelopment would be defined as an action requiring a land disturbance permit. Uh, the proposed hours of operation are Monday through Saturday. 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., and if necessary, on Sunday, 1 to 5. Sometimes these tree people have to go out on emergency trees on top of a house, and they have to work on Sundays. Uh, we've not received any recommendations from stormwater management, but you know, we would be open to fee any feedback from them. So we appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, you guys can have a seat. There was no opposition, so we'll jump right into the discussion. This is in District 3, so Commissioner uh, Lindstrom, it's on you today. Okay. Um, 
Cornelius, there was a sheet that I gave you. If you could put that one up. This is based off of what was the department comments. And I don't know if you can see it from there, but I had my husband number what was going on because this, this actually, I, I think their proposal um, is fantastic. I really think it's a perfect use for this large piece of property. It is already zoned for high in density. Um, and they're working in conjunction with treetop uh, landscaping, which uh, the gentleman mentioned they are a subsidiary of the other company. Um, they, op uh, they operate on the other side of Miss, uh, Miss McGarity's uh, property. And I want to make sure that we can put all of this, it, I guess I'm asking uh, staffing there, can we put these three entities into this one thing so they don't have to come back? I mean, it's a, um, the first one is they're already using, that was, they have a, a slop under that where they um, allow a, thank you, they allow a, um, a used car dealer to store cars. He's, when he gets too many cars for his lot, he stores them here. And when uh, Mr. and Mrs. Bentley were nice enough to invite me up to see the property. And when I was there, there were only seven cars there. And it's a wide area that they have. Um, and I know that uh, DOT, I have to talk to DOT, and fire department, and all this stuff. Um, but that is one use. The second use is along the top, and they have enough space that they would like to store the um, landscaping trucks. I had my p husband, I think, put eight and I'm not even sure it's eight vehicles that they have, but uh, put them along that top and lined up neatly. And then number three, I'm a little, uh, thank you. There is, where that number three is, is a, an old work trailer. I don't even know if it had, I'm sure it has a window in it, but it's very old and you'd use it for, you wouldn't live in it. This is for just space and it's sitting there. And then the other two uh, boxes, which are not placed properly, but one is a is going to be a sawmill, and those things um, are quite long. They can be quite long, and they can be quite wide um, for one sawmill, and then one heating um, incinerator. And these incinerators, um, they don't even call them that anymore. They, uh, but anyway, I want to make sure we can do all this. I looked around the property, and there is nothing behind them. Uh, the family owns that property, so nobody's living there. And it ends up on uh, the north side, uh, the north loop end. So there's nothing to disturb. Um, the, okay, thank you. The property that is not marked, uh, there's no, that is, I believe, and Mr. Bentley, you'll have to tell me if this is true. I think that the family might own that piece of property too. Mrs. Um, Garrity lives downhill at, I think that's her house. Um, it's in this green area between the two purples. Can you point to that? Yeah, yeah uh, over to the right, uh, down. Right. I think that might be her house. Is that true? Yes, it, it, okay. it's in that tree okay. shadow. And then next to the, to the right of that is, um, that is the treetop landscaping company. And it's those trucks, they're gonna be put over into this other area. Uh, th that's my number two on my map. I looked around for um, 
other homes that would be disturbed by this. We have two, we have received two consent letters. And one of these houses, and it's probably this house, below um, the HI in that pointy area, go down, oh, whoop, too far, go back up, now straight down. And that, there's a house in there that has burned down. So there's, to the left of that. I think it's somewhere, I, it might be that house. Um, but there is a house up there that's burned down. There's nobody that's living there that's going to hear this. And that's why I think this is such a perfect opportunity um, to see how this uh, incinerator operates. Is anybody from the fire department here? Yes. Are you Jeff? Can you come up? Can you tell us how these incinerators, uh, I've got to cut, stop calling it an incinerator. They're called air curtain um, burners. Jeff Berg, Cobb County Fire Marshal's Office. The um, incinerator is called an air curtain destructor. Um, and basically what it does is it creates a, um, a curtain of air, high velocity air. It feeds the uh, fire with a lot of oxygen, high intensity oxygen, so that the fire is intense. So it burns off uh, a lot of the uh, wood without creating a whole lot of pollutants in the air. But it has to be uh, a good distance from or any other structures. And there was one structure on it, that I, one area on it that I wasn't sure what it was. I think now I'm understanding that it is a uh, sawmill. So mm -hmm. the air curtain, the, the structure would need to be about 300 feet from that if it is a, considered a structure. But it is a, uh, a device that eliminates a lot of pollutants that will be caused normally by burning wood debris. Now tell, tell me about the um, sawmill. When I was researching this, the sawmills I would not have thought of as a structure uh, so much as a tool. I think of it more as a tool. Um, they, I think that they may be four feet wide. And is that, is that true, Mr. Bentley? This is a Woodmeister sawmill. Yeah, we need you to come to the mic. Sorry. Thank you. So you'll have to repeat all of that, sir. <laughs> Don't go far, <laughs> Mr. Fire this, Department. The sawmill that's currently operating under the company is a wood miser sawmill, which is a portable unit with wheels um, because portable is allowed. We're asking for it to be allowed to be permanently installed so it can be attached to a concrete base and be permanently installed. Oh, okay. But it is a very small unit. I mean, it's towable with a vehicle. Okay. All right. Thank you. Don't, don't go far. All right. Back to the fire department. Um, so that could be moved. And I, I understand these um, air curtain burners. Uh, a couple, a few companies make them that are approved of, and they're used out in California and stuff, with very successful results. And they have a dirt bottom, but they have four walls that are. Um, oh, it's lot. Li they're lined with thermal ceramic walls. Is what it is. And there's the secondary fuel that is used, I understand, really, is at the beginning of a burn. And then it stops. It doesn't continue to be used. So some of these, I understand, can be, well, all of them will be on dirt. And I think what you're talking about is ones that they used to use where they put them in a ditch. Is, is that right? 
No, what I'm talking about is the same thing that you're talking about. Okay. The, the air curtain destructor sits on the, uh, the, the, the level ground, mm -hmm. but like you said, they do create a, a fairly deep and wide ditch where they burn the debris, and that air curtain destructor device creates a, 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 a air curtain, if you will, mm -hmm. high velocity, high oxygen air curtain to keep the debris from uh, escaping. And it mm -hmm. is such a high intensity that everything is burned, most everything is burned up without creating any pollutants. Okay, and I have another question um, for the fire department. Thank you. Um, don't go, You're, I've got another question for you. Um, is the fire hydrant. Now, uh, the way I understand it from reading what the fire comments were, um, that they need 500 feet to the corner of the closest building, which would be that trailer that I mentioned. And the way that Mr. Bentley was first measuring it was from the closest fire department right through the woods. Well, the fire department, as I understand it, requires 500 feet that they can drive on and they can't drive through the woods. Um, is it possible for Mr. Bentley to put in, to install his own fire hydrant on that property? And is the driveway that is existing, is it wide enough and sturdy enough to handle a 62,000 pound fire truck? The Maybe way I saw DOT. the revised drawings, it looks to me that there are a couple of options when it comes to the fire hydrant. Um, like you were correct, the fire hydrant must be within 500 foot of the most remote portion of a structure, in this case, the trailer. Um, and he's outside of that right now as the plans are showing. So one option would be possibly moving that trailer closer to be within that, uh, within that 500 foot measurement, or like you said, he could install a private hydrant, which would include a vault and the fire lines and all of that, but that could be an option option as well. Do you, do you have an idea of how much something like that would cost, Mr. Bentley? It's outrageous. So yeah. oh. it, it's an outrageous, <laughs> ridiculous cost. What if my understanding is that this this particular operation was viable as it is and that I wouldn't be required to do anything from the fire department or the DOT unless we re requested a land disturbance permit, which would be in, in as a prerequisite for getting a building permit. That they wouldn't even come out and inspect anything unless we requested a land disturbance permit for them to come out and do any measuring. Okay. All right, well, that brings me to, um, I guess, DOT, because in the DOT comments, they mentioned that land disturbance, but I'm not sure where the land disturbance is. Is there, no, okay. We, we just have everybody We on We on. have not requested one, and no. only would be required if we requested a building permit. Okay, so we are fine the way it is, okay. And the answer was yes. Okay, good. That's so in my opinion, we're in good shape not doing anything unless we request a land disturbance permit, which requires both the fire marshal and the DOT mm -hmm. to come out, and then we have to start working on some of their, their ideas. Okay. So going back to the fire department then, uh, it, well, maybe... Is that driveway uh, paved? I yes. think that it is. Is yes. it 20 feet wide for the yes, fire truck? Yes, it's more than 20 feet wide. Okay. Um, so that's, I guess, answered the question. Yeah, minimally 20 foot wide, and the surface would have to be such that it supports a 75,000 pound vehicle. Oh, 75,000 yes. pounds. Yes. Okay. Now, can your surface support that, do you think? Well, if you look, I mean, there's been, they've been crushing cars and moving tractor trailers with cars in and out of here for 30 years. So I would imagine that it can support 
that weight without any problem. Okay, okay. Well, my biggest concern, thank you both of you, thank you. My biggest concern um, was the sound from the sawmill and little Miss Garrity, who is not here today, who is the neighbor who lives in that green strip that you see there. Um, but I went by her house and it's downhill and very far away. She's got an 80 foot buffer already. Um, I do think, I just don't see any problem with having all of this on that property. It's a big piece of property. We're talking eight vehicles, which is the same as the gentleman who is before us with his landscaping things. Um, and I have several stipulations um, that would go along with this, which I think would be okay. Now, I don't know what maker, I don't know what manufacturer uh, Mr. Bentley is going to be using, but one of them that I talked to, they require uh, this air burner technology. Uh, they require 100 feet uh, for machinery, like a grinder, to be near them where chips could if a spark comes out from the air curtain, that it wouldn't set uh, the lumber and wood chips on fire. So I, this is what I recommend. I'd like to make a recommendation that vendor one, who is the used car storage, and there may be seven cars there, I think their hours should be Monday through Saturday, eight to five. There's no reason that they need to come up that I can think of. After that, if you, they need it till six, we can make it to six. But no activity on Sunday or federal holidays. Vendor two, which is the tree top, uh, tree tier, top tier tree service, that they would be allowed to store their landscaping equipment um, and offload the trees that they collect um, and they could operate from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. because really all they're going to be doing is 7 a.m. is driving their machines off. And they come back at the end of the day and drop the lumber off. And I, they may be finished in the summer. It may be, it'll still be light. Sundays and federal holidays to be reserved for emergency services only if like there's a tornado or a very heavy storm or somebody's tree fell directly on their house. I think they should be allowed to go to that. Uh, vendor three is the North Georgia Timber where the sawmill grinding business and um, air burner technology is, is Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Those saws and grinders are very, very noisy, and whoever can hear it deserves a break. Um, so there is to be no machine activity or uh, Saturday, Sunday, or federal holidays. And the incinerator needs to stop being fed by 4 p.m. Um, because it takes about, I would, guess, and I, I don't know this for, Mr. Bentley would know this better than I, but I think it will take about an hour for them, to, for that incinerator to burn down that product. Um, are you planning on the equipment? Let me ask you. Is, oh, yeah. Thank you for coming mm -hmm. back and forth. Um, is the incinerate the air uh, the air burner technology that you're planning on using? Do they offer? Uh, they're very that's very expensive equipment too. I understand it runs about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for one of those. Does the one you're looking at um, have a rake attachment? That's an option 
kind of like, do you want roll-up windows or do you want power windows? That kind of thing. Do you know if yours has that? Because they're expensive too. Yeah. I'm going to let the expert with the air curtain destructor talk. Hello, Kevin. Hi, with, Kevin. Uh, T2 Group and Top Tier Trees. Um, to go back actually to one of your original questions to fire, um, air curtain burner technology has traditionally been used uh, to um, exponentially increase the rate of burn for trench burning or open fire pit burning. Mm -hmm. And what is different, uh, and the, the fire department spoke to this a little bit earlier, <laughs> is that this is an above ground self-contained unit that is oftentimes and will be on our site accommodated by a dirt uh, or earth ramp to allow to load the material over the walls into the air curtain burner. Mm -hmm. That ramp serves as emergency um, extinguisher as well to smother and bury the fire inside as opposed to putting to putting water on it to expunge that if something were to get out of hand. So the unit that we would be getting would be the firebox and then it would be accompanied by a loader, a front loader or an excavator type machine. Okay. It does not have a rake attached to it. Okay, great. Well, um, from what I've, uh, in my little Google researching here um, of these air curtain incinerators, mm -hmm or whatever they are, they're very, very hot. And you can put, uh, to put them out at night, you can put dirt over it or That's just exactly. let the embers just stay there. Yeah. But at some point, the remainders of that ash is going to be, be building up. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to remove that ash or do you, or is it on a, um, I see. I Not see. I see a roller, your question. But yeah. you, is it a drag? No, that's 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 a great question. So it's it is uh, four walls, and one of the walls on the end is actually openable. It swings open like a door, and you can use a mini skid or um, a regular skid steer with a bucket attachment to drive in and remove that biochar because it is a repurposable organic yes. material. So we would be either removing it with a mini skid or a skid steer, um, or even potentially one of the grapple trucks that we have uh, within our outfit to reach over as a clamshell and remove that biochar so it can be repurposed. Okay, all right, great. Thank you, yes, thank you both. Did you did you look at airburners.com? I did. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's the one we want. Well, thank that, you. <laughs> that's a good one. And it does have an optional rake. Yes, ma'am. So you know. But thank you both of you for you. Uh, coming up. I don't, um, I don't know if you have any objections to those hours, but I think that they're reasonable. So there's kind of a set of things for each person, um, for each vendor, and then and then the incinerator. You got everything. Oh, good. Yes, I gave her my notes there. All right. So I would make a motion to approve this with all of the stipulations that um, I have written down that you, Robin has, uh, a limit of one sawmill, one, a limit of one grinder, and a limit of one incinerator, uh, an air burner. Using air burner technology, there will be no open fires uh, going on in this thing. Um, adhere to the staffing uh, comments and recommendations from the fire department. Um, zoning comments were uh, were applicable. Stormwater management really didn't have anything. No open burning saw said that. Uh, nothing to be incinerated at night. Um, and then, oh, we didn't talk about this. Uh, Mr. Bentley, are you still close? Yeah. Um, and Mr. Bentley, I can give you a list of these uh, things too. Um, the, the fire department requested that you have a Knox rapid access box attached to the gate so that they can get in in case of a fire in the middle of the night, they can get in there. Now, during the day, those gates are going to be open, and I understood that you were working on improve, either improving the gates 
or, uh, but you would have something to allow them to get through. Well, it's my, that, my understanding that if a gate, unless it's electronic, that they just cut the lock. When they go up, they just cut the padlock to get in. Is that correct? Is that true? And I'm not sure, but you have, a, you have what I think of as a cattle gate. I've got some junk. It's got some pretty junky gates on it. Yes. Well, that's okay. That's okay. It works. We're we're going to do a better job of the with the gate. I'm okay with your gate. I'm okay, but go ahead, Hunter. We typically don't rely on cutting uh, locks because they could be hardened case locks, which would ruin our bolt cutter. So we require a, if it's a mechanical gate, we require a Knox brand a padlock in addition to the lock that they would install on their gate. That way we can get in there after hours or they can get in there whenever they want. Now, you've been up there to see that gate that they've got? Is no, that, I no? haven't. Okay, maybe it was the fire chief who, who did that. Um, is there a place for, or where do you, I, I've seen pictures of them on my infamous Google searches. And they look to be about this big. They're not that the, big. The Knox padlock? Yeah. No, it's just a regular padlock, but it's created by a, the brand called Knox, K-N-O-X. And it's keyed for the fire department, our jurisdiction. Oh. So we can get in there after hours whenever we need to. Okay. That's all he needs. Mm-hmm. Are they hard yes. to find? And if that's a requirement, I don't have any problem with that. Well, uh, that's the fire department's requirement. That, that's not a Chris re requirement. <laughs> well, the other, the only thing that I would request is is that if we can, you know, if, that you allow us to have the possibility of having not multiple burners, but more than one, if space allows. Well, um, now, uh, Kevin was your name. If you have two of those things, can they be, how, do you have the space to be 100 feet apart from each other plus all the other stuff? Right, so the, the placement would require 300 foot from structure and 100 foot from logs, wood chips, et cetera. But the, um, per regulation, and, and as described on the website, the air curtain burner boxes themselves can be within close proximity to each other with intent of one operator, one person, one machine loading multiple boxes at the same time. Uh, that's why these are often employed by FEMA and by different government contractors to do storm cleanup yeah. um, in disaster areas. So um, the idea being you know, the, the, the throughput, if you will, if you're able to burn through 10 tons an hour, now with just the additional investment and making sure that the proximity to structure and other combustible materials was okay and allowable, um, now you could burn, you know, 20, 30, 40 tons an hour, but only increasing the fixture of the firebox, one operator, one machine intent. Okay, well, um, I have been on the property. I know where they're gonna be. Um, if you can fit two, I would allow two. But what I, I really want to avoid is a row of sawmills mm. and a row of, I mean, all of a sudden we're going to be the county's incinerator. And that sounds that's like a great not, plan. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's, I don't think the property can handle all that plus all the traffic. So I think I'll, I'll limit it, if that's okay, to two. Would that work? Yes, ma'am. That's perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Well, that's my recommendation. Oh, oh up for discussion. Sorry. Sure. Nope. We got a we got a motion from you. So I'll I'll take a second. Second. I have a second from Commissioner Ballon. Is there a discussion? I believe that Commissioner Anderson wanted to pose something in discussion. Yes, this is a question of planning. Um, so it, given, the, given the prior use of a salvage yard and um, there, there was no reference to any environmental conditions in the application, uh, I just wanted to understand what, um, just 
concept, I imagine there's been some le some some uses there. Have there been an environmental assessment of any sort done um, that has been submitted to staff, or is there a requirement for any environmental assessments to be done, lest there be some chemicals that can be accidentally incinerated? There has been no assessment given to staff. I'll let Mr. Bentley answer the question whether there's been an environmental assessment on the property. I, I apologize for interrupting you, John. That I do have a stipulation in here that the only wood that they can process, burn, anything, cut, is natural wood. They cannot use plywood or anything with chemicals mm -hmm. involved. Does that answer your question? Well, I, I would, so that, I think that's a great step. I think I was more concerned about just establishing a baseline whenever I look at a property, there's an environmental assessment and given some of the intensity of uses and then just, has there been any benchmark established about kind of any conditions that need to be remediated? Um, given that there are a bunch of cars, leaking oil, things like that stored on the site for years? No, there's, there's nothing like that. EPD inspected this pro this project not from us but through the well it was a salvage yard throughout that process and then once that was once that was completed all of that area has been uh, mitigated all of the area that uh, do you have the pictures in your package of before and after yeah I have a drone footage where it looks very cleared out I I'm just more concerned about just basics of are there any um, recommended environmental conditions that need to be remediated, given that they're having a fire burning use and you know, digging pits and things like that, the, which normally... The area know, is completely covered over with um, two feet of gravel, two feet of crushed gravel, so the area is completely sealed off. Anything that was... The area was a dump at one time in the 50s, so since then, it was the uh, car salvage, and now it's, we, we have completely changed the topography of the whole area, and now it's all completely covered over with uh, a whole different material. Okay. So there's nothing flammable. There's nothing flammable or hazardous available any longer there. Okay. Great. Thank you for the context on that. I just want to ask Mr. Peterson, um, for something like that, is that a is there a letter that's needed from EPD? No further action, anything like that, um, given the change in use. Typically, uh, I know not, uh, not for zoning. Not for zoning. Okay. Is um, just to clarify, if there were something that was determined after zoning, um, is, is that something that would be what would what would prevail? That would the, be between the property owner and EPD. And EPD. Okay. All right, I just want to make sure we don't have anything that we're given the kind of uses over there. Um, yeah, for the, con for the purposes of zoning, I, I, I think there's other mechanisms to make sure that the environmental conditions are addressed. Um, so that was, I, I think I'm satisfied with, with that explanation. Thank the applicant for uh, providing that additional color. And, and Mr. Chair, I think you'd yeah. go ahead and second the uh, amendment to the motion that included an additional condition, which was that only um, natural wood, natural wood, not any uh, uh, laminates, laminated wood, not any uh, synthetic, anything that's been glued. Yep. yep. Thank you. I, um, did we? I just want to make sure that uh, Ms. Stone was able to capture that. Uh, um, And I believe you have the written from Commissioner Lindstrom that has that condition about natural wood in it already. Okay, perfect. All right, any further discussion? If not, let's call the question. I do have oh. one. Uh, if, if, Go oh, for it. Well, I'm gonna vote yes too, but yeah. I do have, um, I just wanna make sure that I've got all of that. Um, oh, I wanted to make sure, yes, actually, I want to make sure that the land use section allowing the salvage or junkyard um, is not eliminated so that if they change their mind 10 years from now, that's still hanging in there. They can't do it at the same, they cannot operate a junkyard at the same time as this. Or will he have to come in? He, he's already approved to have the junkyard. 
So, so that's not going to go away oh, as okay, far as good. the way the board commission approved it. That's that's what I needed. Okay. 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 Any well, kind of half voted, but uh, let's call the question. <laughs> Okay, a vote of four to zero to recommend approval of SLUP 2. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, I, that's up to John Peterson, Mr. Peterson. Well, seeing how there's no opposition and uh, the Planning Commission has this nailed down with a lot of conditions, I think it would be okay for consent. Okay. So we, need to, uh, we need an amended motion. Oh. Okay, I amend the motion. I would like to amend the motion um, to change this to, to not only agree to it, but put it on to the consent agenda. Second, second uh, with, with the prior amendments included. We have a second from Commissioner Bloin. Any discussion? Let's call the question. Vote of four to zero for this to also be included on the consent agenda. Thank you. Thank you for the fire department for coming up, up and down, up and down. I had you the whole time. Sorry. All right. I think that are all our cases. So let's, uh, we have a few minutes to approve. I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the uh, zoning hearing from dated March 5th, 2024. Uh, so moved. Second. I have a second from Commissioner Bloor. Any discussion? Call the question. Vote of, of you still need to vote. <laughs> it's, okay, vote of four to zero to approve the minutes of the March fifth zoning planning hearing. Now we have the minutes of the special called meeting agenda review session from March twenty fifth, twenty twenty four. I'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. And a second. Oh. Second. Second from Commissioner Bloin. Any discussion? If not, call the question. Vote of four to zero to approve the minutes of the agenda review work session. Seeing that that's uh, nothing else left on the agenda, we are stand adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>